This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. This episode of the History of Bad Ideas is sponsored by the Cincinnati Comic Expo, September 23rd through the 25th in Cincinnati, Ohio. Looking to meet John Barrowman from Arrow and Doctor Who fame? Looking to meet Stan Lee, the great Excelsior? Then come on down to the Cincinnati Comic Expo. Again, September 23rd through the 25th, the official sponsor of Hobie. Roger says goodbye. Hello, Hobie listeners. You don't know us, but we know you. I'm Sean. And I'm Ian. And we're the Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. Better known as the bad guys. The villains of the story, if you will. A feud that we didn't even start. It was started by... Jason, all because he called us out, and we retaliated in such, because, what did we say, Ian? We got rings, baby. That's right. We've got rings. <laughs> and the feud escalated, and now here we are, the bad guys. So here we are petitioning today to be the 2016 floppy villains of the year. And to hear just how villainous we are, check out our show. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Satchel, and any other number of podcasting apps that you may find out there. Jeez, I can't even talk. That's how villainous I am. So there you go. Go ahead. Give us a listen. Go Steelers. <laughs> episode number 141 i'm jason i'm jeff i'm convinced the neighbors are throwing tree limbs into my yard i don't think that's gonna be how we started how you doing blake (laughs) doing fine (laughs) have you given them reason to do that i don't know but i just know that there's a fence in between the three properties Mm -hmm. and and all the tree branches end up on my side of the fence i feel like you're the cranky old neighbor from uh, clint eastwood's movie no i'm the perfect neighbor Uh, i'm never there that's the problem I don't know, Jason. I don't think his neighbor died after having a tree dispute like somebody else I know. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Anyways, we got Sean here. Oh, Sean! <laughs> From Pittsburgh Nerd and my arch nemesis, <laughs> Ian. Ian. Well, well, well. How Look at these doing? three morose motherfuckers right here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God. Putting the gauntlet down already. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I was trying to do a little chasing Amy thing. There, I know, but, I know. But I'm not having a threesome with any of the guys I'm with right now. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Hey. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> what goes into on in Cincinnati stays in Cincinnati. That's why we don't do live video. <laughs> well, we could. Jeff, keep your hands above the table. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I do have uh, my Bengals jersey with us tonight. So. But that's a that's amazing. Ian has his terrible towel. Oh, oh. fuck it, eh? <laughs> We hate plus, plus, terrible The towels. dirty rag. Plus, what? we're recording in my living room tonight, so um, we have my Steeler Wall of Fame with Jack Lambert and Joey Porter and Mel Blunt. And, oh, and, so you guys could have... And ha- urine-stained rags <laughs> that you twirl <laughs> well, over yeah. your head? I don't think... Yeah. Kind of, yeah, exactly. Well, they're yellow. <laughs> I think there's something else on those uh, towels. Oh, okay. But yeah, so welcome, guys. Our Arch Nemesis Pittsburgh Nerd is here. 
it, it is good to be here to lobby for our, our bad guys of the year floppy. I appreciate that. Yes. It's a tough competition this year. It's tough competition. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's between us and I don't even know who else. Uh, Dev from Snake Oil because he has not sent us more Pez. Well, well okay. <laughs> he sent us four pounds of Pez. I think we're very ungrateful. <laughs> but he's still, he's still from that state up north. He, he, he's like a dealer. The first hit is free. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's why he's I'm getting... in a, a crappy mood. <laughs> <laughs> Withdraw from the Pez. Exactly. Nice. So where can we find you guys first? Let's get through that here. Oh, okay, well, um, you, you can you can find us all over the internet. Um, uh, we're on uh, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Satchel, uh, Remarks, uh, a number of different podcasting amps. Just search Pittsburgh Nerd, you'll find us. Uh, we have a Facebook page, my lovely Twitter page. Uh, you know, so just just search Pittsburgh Nerd, and you'll. We, we will pop up, and you'll be able to find us rather easily. We don't have a website yet. We hope to someday. Jason, they said a lot of things that we're not on. What's up with that? We're on some of them. Some. We're on. Yeah. More. We need to be on more. I, I know I know you guys are on Remorse, because that's what I actually listen to you guys on. Oh, um, oh yes. But Satchel, <laughs> I, <laughs> that was Satchel I think we, you have to apply to. Yeah, that was one of them you probably set up early when we first You said. I, about 12 different things I sent us to. Thank you, Sean. I did not know I was on that, but yes, good, yes. <laughs> yeah. So the two of you make up Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast, correct? That, that is, is correct, yes. How come your title is singular, but there's two of you? Well, it, it's I took my inspiration from the Lone Rangers. Mm. Ah, I got that. From Airheads? Nice. Yes, exactly. <laughs> nice. Does that mean you have naked pictures of B. Arthur? Oh, 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 the only thing of pictures I have of her is from the Star Wars Christmas special. Oh, oh aren't nice. you lucky? But yeah. we do have the football helmet. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, the football helmet, yeah. Of cottage uh, cheese? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Airheads is quite possibly one of my favorite guilty pleasures for comedies. I love that movie. It, it, it's actually better than you would think it would be. Yes. It really is. Like it, it really, And it holds up, too. It's like just so funny. I... It, it's shockingly funny for, for the guys that are in it. Yeah, Brandon Fraser, Steve Buscemi, and Adam Sandler. Yeah, go figure. And don't even get me started on Michael Richards. Yeah, he's annoying. We could have done without Michael Richards in yes. the movie. Yeah. When he's in the fucking air vents. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah. But Farley makes up for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And is Ernie Hudson the cop? Yeah, Ernie Hudson is the cop, oh, yes. Okay. I, that's Ernie what I Hudson thought. is always the cop. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do some quick uh, word association for you guys, so I'll speak slowly since you're from Pittsburgh. Thank God. So says the Cleveland guy. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Rogers. Scary. A childhood treasure. <laughs> uh, the answer, number two is correct, because Mr. Rogers considered uh, Pittsburgh home. Okay, next question. Iron City Beer. <laughs> Nasty. River water. <laughs> I agree to both. Yeah. <laughs> that is correct. Now, next question. How do you say wash? Wash. Yeah. <laughs> wash. That is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> what is your multiple for you? Yins. Yes. Yins. <laughs> You're throwing the pen. Right. Uh, well, here's the thing. Jeff and I are Cincinnati. Blake right. is Cleveland. You guys are Pittsburgh. I'm a transplant. Yeah, but, you know. I, I grew up in Northeast Ohio, so that, that's why I know so much about lower life forms that are east of Cleveland, Akron, Youngstown area. <laughs> can, we all agree wow. that we, can we all agree that we hate Baltimore? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely, yes, yes. Okay, we agree on that. Uh, and you guys need to be on your best behavior because I don't know if you saw the Bengals playoff game. I'm not sure if you saw that. Um, we know how to shift people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we do. And you guys know how to cheat because you guys are the biggest effing cheaters ever illegally getting away with the biggest bullshit there is. Now, wait okay. a minute. They are this, not this, New England. This is coming from a man whose team's greatest moment is Turkey Jones suplexing Terry Bradshaw. And that is a beautiful moment. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the most beautiful quarterback sack in history. What is there not to like, especially if you're a WWF or E-fan? I, 
Actually, I think Joe Namath uh, being sacked was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> or no, Theismann. That, that's yeah. Theismann with the leg. Oh. The Theismann. Theismann leg. Crack. Yeah, but we don't all hate Joe Theismann. My favorite was Mark Sanchez when he just fumbled because the ball hit someone's butt. <laughs> that's because he's just a New York player. <laughs> a- actually, true story, Joe Theismann once flipped me off. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Really? I never heard it. Yeah, it was, it was, off. That was just the bone coming out of his uh, <laughs> leg. <laughs> out of his middle finger. Um, yeah, it was at a, his leg. He was at a Pitt Notre Dame game. Right. And I, I was, uh, he was walking past, and I asked him how his wife was. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why would he flip you off for that? Uh, <laughs> Maybe because they knew something he didn't. Go ahead. Well, what? He left his wife after uh, he, he was recovering for uh, some supermodel or something, so. Um, that's understandable. But I got a good Pittsburgh story for oh, you. Oh, God. You know, time out, Blake. This, you know, this you're is, not hold on, hold to, on. You're not this supposed was, to insult your, the guest. No, no, no. no. This, <laughs> this is not insulting anymore. I was 12 years old. I was at this Akron eatery that's called Skyway. It's a drive-in burger joint. Like, if you went to the 1950s with the chicks with roller skates would come out to your car. Okay, Take yeah. your order. Yeah, and you get the, the tray of food mm-hmm. on your window. Right. Mm-hmm. We're there, and the waiter comes up and says, hey, you know Brian Sipe? is over there in, like, Space 32. And when he's done eating, he said he'd sign autographs. And everybody's like, oh, this is awesome. So my mom and dad are like, hey, go get Brian Sipe's number. I said, okay, that's great. I go out there. I stand in line. I got my pen. I got my piece of paper. Brian Sipe's, like, ignoring everybody. He's got his kid in the car. He's ignoring everybody, looking straight ahead, looking at his burger, which is good. Skyway, by the way. (laughs) And when he's done, he actually rolls down the window for everybody. And he starts signing autographs because he's a cool guy. And he gets to me. I walk up to his window. And he looks at me. And he looks at my shirt. And he looks back up at me. And he looks back down on my shirt. And he looks back up at me. And I go, Mr. Skype, can I just get your autograph, please? And I was wearing a Terry Bradshaw (laughs) number 12 (laughs) Pittsburgh Steelers shirt with Terry Bradshaw's face on the front of it. And he was like looking looking at the face, looking at me, looking at the face. But he still gave me an autograph, by the way, which I still have to this day. So I was wearing a Terry Bradshaw Pittsburgh Steeler t-shirt when I got Brian Sipe's autograph back in that's, 1982. Let me that's ask beautiful. You, let me ask you guys this. Um, oh, nice. Who's the bigger star in Pittsburgh? Uh, Terry Bradshaw? Or Bradshaw? Bradshaw. 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 Are you speaking like a Pittsburghian? Sorry, I've had a half yeah. a beer. Yeah. Uh, or Cordell Stewart? <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Oh, <laughs> I don't Can, know much about uh, you, this football. <laughs> you're giving me the meat sweats right now just thinking about Cordell Stewart. Uh, just no. awful. You, you should awful. have said double Neil O'Donnell. Oh, fuck Neil O'Donnell. <laughs> he came here. Fuck him. Uh, at, at least Neil O'Donnell could throw a good interception. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Larry Brown paid him to throw those interceptions in the Super Bowl? Uh, I, I think him and Larry Brown split some money. After there's the, no, there, there's no doubt about it. Larry Brown got that big contract with the Raiders. I, mm-hmm. I, I got a good feeling that uh, him and Neil may have split some cash there. Yeah, I think Neil. That O'Donnell was unreal. Was, that game was unbelievable. Yeah, Neil O'Donnell basic Neil O'Donnell basically screwed you guys going into that Super Bowl because going into that Super Bowl there were all kinds of rumors that he was leaving the Steelers and he's like, oh no 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 no. As soon as the Super Bowl was over, he's like, I'm a Jet. <laughs> right, oh. right. And, and, yeah. and you're right. He sucked in that Super Bowl. He threw those picks. It was a piece of shit. Well, Oakland, they're geniuses because they signed Larry Brown and Desmond Howard, both Super Bowl MVPs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, back-to-back years. That was a good signing by Al Davis, a.k.a. Skeletor. <laughs> yeah. How dare you insult Skeletor that way? <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> well, there was Mel Davis on our roster for uh, Villain of the Year against. Uh... Yeah, he was pretty awful. God, he is. Oh, fuck him. You know, we, we've been ripping on Pittsburgh for a while. Let's take a moment to talk about the good things about Pittsburgh. All right, let's move on. No, no. Well, <laughs> Pittsburgh has many good things. The yes, pi- it does. The Pirates, the P- <laughs> PNC Ballpark. Best ballpark in the uh, Major League Baseball. It's Jeff and I agree on that. It's a pretty ballpark. Yeah, it's nice. It is. A, it's a beautiful park, absolutely. So the idea is that we're going to come up next September-ish uh, for a Pittsburgh Pirates game. Are you guys going to join us there? Oh, yeah. We'll absolutely, go. yeah. Excellent. 
Yeah, uh, it's true. They have Ben Roethlisberger, who's from Findlay, Ohio. Yes, yes. And played for Miami University. It yeah, takes, we don't claim him, though. It takes I skill do. to be accused of rape in six states, so good for him. Good hey, for him. To quote Ben Roethlisberger, take my shot, you bitches. All <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway. Admi- admittedly, Ben Roethlisberger is a complete and total jag off. Yes. A- as a human being, I want nothing to do with him. Yeah. But, but he's, damn, he's a Hall I'm of glad, Fame quarterback. I'm, I, I am glad he is our quarterback. Yeah, he, he's, he is a Hall of Fame quarterback. There's no doubt about it. I, I'm a big Toronto Blue Jays fan, and I equated him to Jose Bautista. If Bautista was on any other team, I would fucking hate him, but I am glad he is my asshole <laughs> on the Blue Jays. And there, there's a former Pirate right there. Yeah. Bautista. Oh, yeah. That's Diesel. That's old school. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's think about it. Since, That's so know, old school. <laughs> that was 10 years Cincinnati ago. Shares Dave, cool. Cincinnati shares Dave Parker, right? Yeah, Dave Parker. Yeah, Dave, yeah, Dave, Dave Parker. Sure. Um, yeah. After he left the Pirates, we threw batteries at him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Stay classy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's how we keep it classy here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we uh, I will say, could you explain how Antonio Brown faked his concussion last year in the playoff game? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I mean, it, that's that's pretty pretty damn simple. Um, you know, Von, Vontez Bur- perfect, perfect, whatever the fuck his name is, criminal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he is such a wuss that he thought he hit him. Oh. But he really didn't. And okay. and based upon the reaction he saw from Perfect Brown laid out and played dead. <laughs> it, it was very much Coyote Roadrunner bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he's a good actor because I've seen him recently in the ESPN commercial where he's at the reception desk. That's true. That is true. <laughs> Antonio Brown, not perfect. Antonio <laughs> Brown, yes. Great actor. I still think it would have been funny in the ESPN commercial if Perfect would have ran by. <laughs> Just knocked him. <laughs> well, the best is, okay, so, we, you know, everybody still has a sour taste after that playoff game last year. And part uh, of no, it is, no, we don't. No, we don't. No. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> Ian, division title. You should baby. have a sour taste because of all the injuries the Bengals laid on. You couldn't win the next game. It was a yeah, bad game. Yeah, but... I mean, you, you, I'll take losing to Denver if it means getting a win in Cincinnati. And Tebow? I, Denver uh, with uh, Tebow uh, or without uh, Tebow? Uh, <laughs> there know, there, there are moments be, in my life that will live that. for me forever. Twist you know, that. Francisco Cabrera. Twist that. Side. Sid Bream, yes. You know, yes. You know, that, that's one of those moments that, you know, Larry Brown yeah. and, and Tebow having the game of his life. <laughs> the good- I mean, the, the guy, a bigger piece of trash. The only way he could have been a bigger piece of trash if he was one of the 27 quarterbacks that Cleveland's had since 1999. <laughs> We're I'm sorry, that's up to 28 now. I don't know. There's an opening now, maybe. <laughs> yeah. He, no, he just signed with the Mets. Yeah, their season's about uh, done, so... Well, the good news is it's not like you lost to a flash-in-the-pan quarterback. I mean, Tebow is probably a future Hall of Famer for the uh, NFL, don't you think? <laughs> the, 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 C- the CFL, maybe. <laughs> MLB? Yeah, I mean... G- you, you, GFL, you, God's Football League. <laughs> the, 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 shame, the shame of it is, I have nothing but the utmost respect for Tim Tebow. Like, he was a hell of a college quarterback. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And, and, like, he was... If he chose not to play quarterback, he probably would have been a great NFL player. Cordell Stewart. Yeah, Cordell Stewart, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> But he decided to be a quarterback, and I mean, with everything else he has to bring into the table, his athleticism, his, his leadership skills, he probably would have been an, 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 a, uh, a Hall of Famer, but could he had to play a, quarterback. Could have been an elite tight end. Exactly. A safety? Mm. Something. Uh, the, no. The good news is, you have a quarterback, we have a quarterback, Blake, does the Browns have a quarterback? What makes you think that? <laughs> you didn't have a quarterback in week one anyways. <laughs> you know what's ironic? I'll tell you what's ironic. I really should have put something down in Vegas for this exact bet because before the game started, a childhood friend of mine texted me and said, what's your prediction for today's game? I said, today's game, Eagles will win 31-10, Carson wins two touchdowns, <laughs> will beat the Browns, the team that passed up on him, who said he wasn't a top-20 quarterback, mm-hmm. and RG3 will be out for the season. 
I have I have never made a better prognostication <laughs> in my life. The actual score is twenty nine to ten. Yes, Wentz oh, had two you... touchdowns, and RG three is out for ten weeks. He's going to be gone for the year. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And, I, you know, this is just this is just another day in Cleveland Browns fandom. I feel like this. I is... mean, I, since nineteen ninety nine and even before that. This doesn't even phase me anymore. I just <laughs> laugh at it because this is exactly what happens. I th- when when oh, the ahead, Cincinnati stop. Bengals are a sign of stability in the head coaching ranks <laughs> compared, <laughs> compared to the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, Pittsburgh three, Steelers. Three, co- three, three head coaches in two yeah. years yes. compared to three head coaches in, 40? in 45 years. Yeah, for you guys. Go ahead and rub it in, man. <laughs> At least we don't make Iron City beer in Cleveland. <laughs> Fuck you. Plus, plus, Cleveland found a way to pass Cincinnati and having the ugliest uniforms in the NFL. Oh, my God. I completely agree. <laughs> They're a shitstorm. We used to have one of the classiest uniforms in all of NFL. Uh, and now I, I agree. They've, they've gone to this, this, these... Poop stains? Oh my god, they're horrible. <laughs> I feel like with your quarterback situation, it's more addition by subtraction, though. I feel like McCown actually gives you a better chance to win than RG3 ever will. I feel like you'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, let's get to some nerd stuff here. Nerd. Indeed, I'm sure I'm sure people are like, what the yeah. hell? They're like, we're tired of this Pittsburgh stuff. We want to hear the nerd. Yeah, Pittsburgh exactly. Nerds. Can we let's talk? get to it. Can, nerds, did anyone nerds, see... nerds. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can, did anyone know, watch CM Punk get his ass kicked? I read about it. I had it on our Facebook page. This year, bad ideas. Yeah, he and, forced me to read about it. All you had to do was watch it. It was the greatest thing. I've ever, I love CM Punk. I don't know what the fuck he was doing in there. Getting his ass kicked. Is he like the second failure WWF guy to come over to real fighting and not really yeah, succeed? Les- Lesnar did well. Lesnar's like 50-50, isn't he? Well, that's because he has like no stomach muscles anymore. <laughs> but but he's won matches. Well, he's got that's a great failing. kick-ass dagger yeah, I mean, on his Le- chest. Les- Lesnar held the title, and then he, what, he, uh, he got positive. like a staph infection or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. tested yeah. positive. Yeah, whatever. No, it was stomach issues. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. I knew it was the something. The first time but... it was stomach issues. This time it was tested yes. positive. See, I don't even remember <laughs> his accomplishment. I just remember his co- his comment afterwards that got more press. That was he was going to go back home and lay on his wife. Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't even know if he won that match. I, apparently he did, right? Uh, he lost the first oh, match he, he was ever one. in, but then he ended up go, doing a okay. pretty good job. Sure. So CM Punk will not get him back into a UFC ring. Can we all agree on that one? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty certain on that. I did not expect him to get his ass kicked that cleanly. I didn't think he was going to win, but he got his ass kicked. He was started throwing punches like I throw punches, and that's not a good sign. On your back? No, 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 I'm not the turtle defense. <laughs> not the turtle nice. defense. <laughs> Actually, CM Punk was on his back kicking. He was kind of the turtle defense. Or curling up. It didn't work for him, huh? No, no, it didn't. He's not an expert in the turtle defense. Was he going to the fetal position? <laughs> he did it at the end. Uh, we got a Twitter poll of the week based on our last episode, number 140. Twitter poll and of the week. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I like that. They did it better. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, hired. What truly is the best breakfast side dish? Uh, coming in last place at 7% because this is just Nazi food. Biscuits. Nobody likes biscuits. I think that, that was like from biscuits. our southern listeners. Yeah. Just south well, of the Mason Dixon. Just glad you didn't put grits in there. Oh, I forgot about grits. I like grits. Oh, grits are nasty. That would have broken into the biscuit Eat. vote. John? I- Ian, well, Ian, I like grits. Ian is a southern boy at heart. Mm-hmm. His, his dad lived in Mississippi, so. West Virginia? Because yeah. isn't Pittsburgh northern West Virginia? <laughs> West West Virginia is nothing to do with us. Yeah. How, it's got everything dare, to do with how, you guys. How, I don't know what you're talking about. How dare you, sir? How, <laughs> right. how dare you Wait a associate us with those hillbilly goat fuckers in the south? <laughs> wow. Oh, great, so now West Virginia's going to hate us. No, no, not us. Just Pittsburgh. Oh. So, I, I welcome that hate. But that would be self-loathing because they're all Pittsburgh fans. <laughs> so Ian's dad's from Mississippi, so I take it he probably doesn't listen to us. Not that he would anyways. But I feel like we've made fun of Mississippi a lot, so that could be an issue. We have? Nah, yeah. we. They they live down, uh, he was Air Force, so he lived down on uh, Keesler Air Force yeah. Base on the coast. Okay. So, so even they more, kind of moved around. Even he, more he moved around all over the country. There you go. 
There you go. <laughs> really, Blake? Really? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, let's see. I like grits too, Ian. That is the one. Th- oh, look at Ian and I agreeing on something. Actually, oh, I like grits too. Put a little bit of butter and sugar in there. But if you need to put butter and sugar on there, why don't you just eat sugared butter? You just, it's, you don't, yeah. I, I think yeah. the best you is just garlic, garlic, garlic. Why do you need cheese. grits in there? If you need it to taste good, no. Grits are nasty. Garlic, cheese, and butter is the best. Ooh. <laughs> That's good that. grits right there. Just eat cheese and butter. You don't need the grits. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, we don't care about your dinner, okay? <laughs> you anti-hash brownite. Um, 20% was toast. 20% in third place was toast. I voted for toast. Was this plain toast? With butter. You know. Well, you didn't put, like, no cinnamon toast, no Twitter toast Twitter only allows you, like, ten more letters. <laughs> All right. Well, you can have a completely separate toast vote. Well, maybe if you got to Twitter, you could, Blake. You could do it yourself. (laughs) He's got a point. Uh, Let's see. Second place, 33%. Home fries. Home fries. Home fries. Which are really good. They're okay. The Bob Evans ones are good. Which which I've Uh, learned are not the same thing as hash browns. No. They're potatoes. Places where I went served shredded potatoes fried in a pan. Mm, No. When I got home fries, that's what they were. And... And then I looked online, and people, I'm like, those are not the home fries I've ever gotten. Those sound good. Oh, they're really good. <laughs> no, you had hash browns. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> yes. I had hash browns. Yes, you did. The place called them home fries. So, huh. so I don't I, want to insult the chef, but uh, don't seem to know what they're talking about. <laughs> Apparently, I, I need to go back and yell at those places. <laughs> it's like false advertising. We'll get everybody in here by saying we have home fries. <laughs> All right. Why don't they just say... French fries in little squares. <laughs> that would be a good one. There you go. And number one, well, obviously Jeff was wrong. 40% of the people said the best breakfast side dish was truly hash browns. Yes. <sighs> no. Just terrible. Hash browns. Because every breakfast that like Jeff eats is 80% hash, brown hash, hash browns. Or Denny's hash browns. See, okay, see, there's a big difference. We were talking last week. McDonald's for hash browns are the bomb. Those are good. <laughs> They're very good. I like them. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't like much things at McDonald's. They're not, it's not much edible food there. Um, <laughs> Great now, they're not going to sponsor us. If they've listened to any episodes, they know they're not going to sponsor us. <laughs> We're not vanilla enough for those people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so 40% was hash browns, so Jeff, fuck you. You lose. Uh, you uh, 60% incorrect. did not pick hash browns, so I think I win. 73% picked hash browns or home fries. They're pretty much cousins. So uh, <laughs> You just told me they weren't. You screamed and argued with me that they weren't the same thing. So it's pretty. they're cousins, pretty much like the majority of husbands and wives in Pittsburgh. So it's okay. Exactly. Wow. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we really are happy you guys are nah. What? It's great. Okay, now we're done insulting you. Good night. <laughs> Isn't Kentucky right across the river from hey, it? Hey, Pretty much. Yeah, we, we've there's got a reason, that river for a reason. There's a reason that river's there, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's flowing our poo and piss down to you. Oh. Wow. You, that, so that explains the <laughs> O'Donnell. Uh, we all know Kentucky is Tennessee's suburb. Okay, let's just go with that. It's not really a oh. state. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not. It's a commonwealth. Thank So is Pennsylvania. <laughs> Yeah, you're not really a state either. That's right. <laughs> you guys are like the Keystone State. What the fuck is that? That's a shitty beer. No, it's like the old video game, Keystone Keepers on the Atari. And you're the cop chasing Oh, yeah. Them. <laughs> Nobody? Okay. No. That's a good game. I, I I like my Keystone beer good. reference better than your Keystone cop. Ian agrees with me. Yeah, I don't you, like... you and Ian are getting along. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, this is really scary. Keystone hey, I play Atari Capers. games. Can, can I just say that Pennsylvania Turnpike sucks? I fucking hate that Pennsylvania term. I, that I'll agree with you on. That we can agree on that. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. You end up paying a hundred bucks. To oh see my god, it's out. horrible. I, I I didn't realize that they only had exits like every forty miles. And then they even yeah. have exits that are only for prepass epay. And if you get off that, they like send you a ticket in the mail saying you couldn't get off at this exit. So when I was getting, oh okay, so Waze is telling me to get off at this exit there outside of Philadelphia. I get off the exit, and there's a big sign that says, E-Pass exit only, you're being photographed. So, of course, I <laughs> you know, I lowered the, my hand out the window and stuck my middle finger out. Mm-hmm. I hope that was on the license plate photo. 
<laughs> because it's, Pennsylvania did send me a ticket two weeks later. You're not authorized to get off this exit. I'm like, fuck you, man. Then you should put a sign that says I'm not it, authorized. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but Sean and Ian don't work for the Department of Transportation. They, they, they you, you guys, do you work for the Department of Transportation? Do not. No, we oh, don't. Okay. I don't think you can yell at them for that ticket. <laughs> but they live but I, in, P- in Pennsylvania, so there. <laughs> well, but I he, think it's the only turnpike in the country that is filled with dilapidated Roy Roger restaurants. <laughs> Did you guys get it? Oh, we, I love Roy Rogers. We have oh. Roy Rogers here in Cincinnati. It we closed like about five years yeah, ago. Sean, go figure. It's the last one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> hey, Roy Rogers oh. is from Cincinnati. That is, the, that is fucking horse meat. That is the worst restaurant I think I've ever been in my life. I, I don't know. It's, you, it's, have, it's the worst Arby's ever. No. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it better is. than Arby's. Oh, no, if it good. was, it would still be in business. <laughs> oh. It's still better than Arby's. Great. Now, Arby's won't sponsor <laughs> they us. They weren't sponsoring us after last week. I like Arby's. <laughs> hey, if they'll work with Jon Stewart, they'll work with you. That's right. Oh, good point. <laughs> I like I like the Arby's with the curly fries and the cheddar cheese. Mmm, good. Uh, so I'm out I'm out of Cincinnati about 25 miles or so, and we kind of have some farms and that out here where I'm at, and uh, so it's a little it's not as built up. We have an A and W restaurant. Do you guys have those? A yeah, and W root beer stands. The, the- we have them, but they're combined with Long John Silvers, which yeah, I they, cannot stand. Yeah, they used to be standalone root beer joints. Ours yeah, is, yeah ours is combined with KFC. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And, huh. and we moved out here about a couple of years ago, and my wife and I were like, A&W still around? Like, <laughs> we, we, I don't think there's one within 80 miles of us, <laughs> except for this one. Isn't there one in the mall? Is there? Okay, the mall does not count. Uh-huh. <laughs> does anyone think, go to the mall? Not really. They might not still be there because the mall is pretty empty. <laughs> Do you guys still have the, um, when you, if you go to A&W, they used to have like root beer like on tap. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes that you know what good. I'm talking about. And that yes. was the best root beer in the world. Yeah, they and took they them all out. Serving they in took frosty all the mugs out. too. So they just give you what you know, fountain like a regular fountain root beer. You, there's no tap anymore. You can't get the. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, they, they even used to give you like a cold mug. The good stuff is yeah, gone. Frosty yeah. mug. It was awesome. I mean, there's nothing like getting uh, you know, A and W burger or hot dog and having fish fries with it. I mean, it tastes like fish. Every 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 oh. thing from that place tastes like fish. Yeah, because yeah, they're frying the, the it's fish fucking Long John with Silver's. The fries that shit stays in the same forever. It's horrible. Yeah, but it, it you're right. Awful. It did have the best root beer. For a second there, I thought you meant they actually served something called fish fries. <laughs> well, that's what it tastes like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because they're combined with Long John Silver's, it, it, so you get you get the fries and you end up with the fish crumbs in the bottom of it, mm-hmm. right? Or a, or a clam or two. Yeah. yeah. Same. Ooh, fries. that stray clam in your fries. <laughs> it's like a prize. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, bonus. <laughs> Daddy, I want an A and W Happy Meal. Here's your clam. <laughs> Ooh. Right. Yeah. Why does my fry taste like peppers? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's do some listener feedback here. Uh, and also, just let the fans know, the reason why uh, Pittsburgh Nerds is on this week is because the Bengals play the Pittsburgh in a pit- meaningless game because it's week two and nobody really cares. Uh, a week here. Wow. <laughs> let's build that uh, excitement up there, Jason. Yeah, really. <laughs> NFL does not need any input from us <laughs> to build them up. At, at Pitt Penn State game last week, that was nothing. Don't worry about that. It was only week two of college football. No, did well, anybody watch that? Different. <laughs> did anybody watch that? Outside I of did. West Virginia? Sean did. <laughs> I was too busy watching Central Michigan uh, beat Oklahoma State. That was totally legitimate. <laughs> that, kill, that kills me because, you know, Pitt plays Oklahoma State next week. Oh, it's going to hurt their strength of schedule. Yeah. Well, not, well, not that that's going to matter at all. But more importantly, <laughs> Oklahoma State's just going to be angry. <laughs> Because it's down in Stillwater, and I, I, oh, it's going to be ugly. I got a bad feeling about that game. Uh, I will say it's not all mocking you, got Pitt, the city of Pittsburgh. Jeff and I used to go there a lot uh, back before I was had kids in that. Twice, three times. The lady, a lot. <laughs> and three well, times. yeah, but it was like three times in four years. Oh, okay. Ooh. And then I went two more times without you. So fuck you. <laughs> Anyways, we did say if it wasn't for the snow, we would be inclined to move to Pittsburgh. We did like your city a lot. We did like what? it. So. Well, thank you. But there's no way I could live there in the winter time. See, I could. I, I can't live don't. here in the winter time. <laughs> I was gonna say, isn't our snow your snow? Pretty much. No. But you got no. 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 We, we 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 don't get the snow, and we don't have the hills combined. Well, we have hills, well, but not your hills. But we not get, the yeah. snow. We I, get from more northeast ice. Ohio. 
this down here in the southwest Ohio, this ain't shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, not no. compared to what Cleveland gets. No, no, not at all. I see. I think it's because God just wants to cover Cleveland because no. it's such a horrible city. <laughs> no, I, actually, I, I do agree. Pittsburgh's very pretty, especially in the hills and in the, in the fall, mm-hmm. in the, where the three rivers, you know, the mm-hmm. three rivers come together. It is very nice, and they've actually uh, filmed a couple movies there in the past couple of years. No, haven't they? Pittsburgh's been a nice city until Bane took over. Yeah. Then, yeah. 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 it kind of went downhill. Yeah. That was the one moment you were rooting for Bane, right? Actually, oh. I, actually I wasn't until Heinz Ward showed up, and I was like, can't you kill him? Of all the people Yeah, of survived? all the people that survived, it was Heinz Ward. It's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> that asshole. Hey. <laughs> Heinz is all right. It would I be guess. like if our city blew up, if, if the Bengals all died, and Jeremy Hill survived. Yeah. I mean, the, the entire football field caves in, and you can't fucking kill Heinz Ward. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Bane. Do your job. You uh, have one job. I blew up the rest of the city. That was actually not bad. Yes, it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought my impression was okay. Okay, moving on. Uh, Blake, let's do some listener feedback. All right, listener feedback. We start with uh, this guy named Doug. Number one fan, Doug. Can't give yourself a nickname. Uh, Doug says, Son of Zorn, first episode, meh. Did you guys see this, Sean and Ian? Um, I, I had no interest in it. Oh. I, I, I've seen the previews for it, mm-hmm. and I said, uh, no thank you. The, the previews I actually thought were funny and this yes. could do something but the previews were the only thing that was funny and there's no way they can stretch this out to a multi-episode show I, I think that was my problem i'm looking at it, i'm going this is just gonna be a one note you know one joke show this is gonna go for 22 episodes no thank you it'll just wear on you after 10 well you figure it's fox so they're probably going to show episode seven next then episode True. nine <laughs> right so then you're not going to know any of the storyline <laughs> Um, no, my wife, I asked my wife the other night, I was like, hey, let's, do you mind watching a new show with me? I don't want to tell you what it's about. And she's like, (laughs) okay. And she's not much into like nerd culture, but you know, she's like, I don't care what you watch, you know, be happy. And she's like, yeah, I'll watch it with you. And I think her face the whole time was just, her mouth was open. Like, I have no idea what I'm watching. She laughed at parts, but she's like. I don't know how this is going to last. <laughs> I was like, I don't either. I feel well, like a why, lot of why have I had children with this man? <laughs> <laughs> Three. Let's be honest. Three of them. Let's be honest, Sean. She's asked that many times. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Son of Zorn <laughs> that did that. <laughs> Note to self: the birth control is not working. Yeah. Oh, it is now. We're good now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we fixed that. I had major yeah. surgery. <laughs> and it's Tie major. So it's shit. major surgery, okay? <laughs> she did not think it was major surgery for me. I think it is. <laughs> no, it's fucking I can't critical. think of a major earth surgery. Well, she goes, it's not major surgery because the doctor said you only have to be there two minutes be- or five minutes before. Oh, and it's in the doctor's office? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Can I eat and drink beforehand? Yeah, you'll be fine. Son of a bitch. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it one of the most weirdest surgeries in one of your most delicate nether regions? That isn't it weird because you're still awake? Yes. It's a shot and you're like, they're doing shit down there. And you're like, I know this is going to hurt me later, but damn. Yeah. And then you see, you look at the nurse and she just has dead eyes. Yeah. And she's like, why am I doing this? Why did I go to college for this? I've seen <laughs> I've seen a billion scrotums. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you're reading Teen Vogue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Teen Beat. Teen no. Beat. Tiger no. Beat. Tiger, no, Tiger Beat. Tiger Beat. Tiger no, he's beat. reading Highlight Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found the differences. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that goofus. <laughs> that goofus. He did it again. Good <laughs> Beat. <laughs> I can't the find nurse the is dead in the world. She's like, yeah, how many guys come in with a direction thinking they're going to get some porno thing coming in? <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to get that. Some nasty pervert. No, the know? person who thought he was going to the sperm bank? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's my, yeah. Here's my deposit. Mean, That's not what we're doing, no. sir. <laughs> we're actually doing <laughs> the opposite. I, she's like, I've heard my that shit joke would be in the turtle times. position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody looks at each other in the waiting yeah. room in that way. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, there you know, the best part is all the spouses at her, and they're happy as shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, all the guys look like beaten dogs. Yeah. 
Okay, so I wasn't <laughs> going to talk about this, but I will now because right, it's yes. so funny. Oh, uh, please. There's What's two it? people in there with us, okay? Not in, the in the room? No, 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 not in the room. <laughs> nice. In the waiting room. One couple. Hey, nice. all holding hands. Nice jump. <laughs> please, God. Uh, one couple was 25 to 27 years old, like very young. Wow. Yeah. And my wow. wife was like, Really? I was like, oh, well, maybe if, you know, he could have a medical issue or maybe they just don't want kids. Or maybe they've already had enough. I don't think they had any. Oh. Um, well, then go ahead. Do it. <laughs> do it. Well, then they started to make out. And I'm not kidding. They started making out in the oh, waiting room. Wow. And I looked at my wife. She's like, don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, maybe it's one last hurrah for them. Uh, then there was another guy and he came in with his wife and they had like a three-year-old. And the three-year-old said at one point that he hated his mom. Um, <laughs> That's why they're there. Demon child. Yeah. <laughs> We're not having any more of these. I went back. The guy went back. I came out, and my wife said, yeah, there's a reason why he went back. I was like, why? She's like, uh, she literally ran after him around the chairs because the three-year-old just kept running. Full blast. And so was the mom. She put her phone down and was like, oh, and ran around the chairs to full speed to catch him. Speaking and I was like, Aramaic the entire time. What's that? Speaking in Aramaic the entire time. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but it was like... Red rum, red rum, red rum. Yeah. <laughs> he's, got... <laughs> he, he's coming for you, yeah. Malachi. <laughs> it's like, I don't know why I'm getting the vasectomy. That's Satan's baby. He <laughs> oh, should no, be no. getting the vasectomy. We ended up riding with them down on the elevator to the parking oh. lot. Oh. And... Oh. Yeah, this is the awkward moment. She swarm, looks... <laughs> swarm of flies comes out of the diaper bag. <laughs> well, this is the awkward moment. Yeah. <laughs> she looks at her husband and he's like, I'm really sore. And she's like, well, I told you I didn't want to do this. This was all your idea. I don't feel sorry for you. And my wife looked at me and we're like, that's a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you not talk about this until we get off the elevator? <laughs> We really don't care. We saw your demon child over there. Uh, he's now right. sacrificing a goat. Uh, this is a conversation for the ride home, not the elevator ride down. He's butting the heads off frogs in the parking lot. <laughs> he has an Ozzy Osbourne shirt, shirt on. I don't know. I'm a little worried. All right. So, Doug, thanks for your question. And this thing just went right off the rails. I've listened Woo. to enough episodes. We're we're well off. That's uh, that's why we're on the Tangent Bound Network. Yeah. <laughs> comic book uh, expo is really since I comic expo is really excited about sponsoring us. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> you'll you'll be getting a wor strongly worded memo about this one. <laughs> we did warn them ahead of time. We're explicit. <laughs> so. Uh, go ahead, uh, Blake. What's next? Uh, next one <laughs> regarding insulting Southern listeners, including Georgia. We got a comment from this. <laughs> Said uh, from Mom, I'm sorry. At Mom, I'm sorry. They're a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Said apologize. Talking about they are from Georgia. They yeah, are from Georgia. Okay. And thank you for submitting. Yes. Apologize. You have obviously never been to Georgia. Any insults? Well deserved, but we are awesome. They are. <laughs> They're <laughs> awesome, but deserving of insults. Yes. Yes. Mom, I'm sorry. You know what this means. This means Jason and Jeff will now per commence open season on Southern Insults. No. No, we will not. Or how we about those Bulldogs? Oh, God. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> College football. It's about as bad as Cincinnatians talking about high school football. Oh, my God. Yeah, do you got a lot of high school football craziness there in Pittsburgh? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, oh, for sure. They're, they're one of the... Uh, a, a, a local rivalry almost made my top five. Oh wow. my gosh! I, 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 there, I'll tell you what. There's nothing more depressing to me than seeing a 55 year old grown man wearing his elder football jacket. <laughs> we have an elder in, high school in, here in Cincinnati. <laughs> or you know, it's either that or you know, Saint X, same thing, or Colerain or whatever, or Moeller. Is like, dude, you're 55 years old. You don't have any kids that went to that school anymore. <laughs> you're clinging on to that, you know, one year your made varsity team, you know, fifth, you know, 40 years ago. What was that Time movie with on. Robin Williams and all the right moves? Yeah. Yes, oh. all the right yeah. moves. Exactly. Like that. That, that's yeah. that is uh, basically 75 percent of the no. Cincinnati West Side population. Not all the right moves. <laughs> no, all the right Tom moves Cruise. is Tom Cruise. That was filmed in Pittsburgh. No. Come oh, on. Oh no, you're. Oh, that was all the right. Moves. Oh, no, was you it? got to see Tom Cruise's penis in it. <laughs> wow! Wow! At the clinic. 
Now, wait a minute. Who was the hot Everybody's chick in all the all right American? moves? No, I got that it. Was that was Leah Thompson. It. Leah Thompson. Leah Thompson. That was Leah, Leah Thompson. Thompson. Yeah, yeah, that was Leah yeah. Thompson. Yeah, that was that was during my Leah Thompson crush years. Yep. Yeah, I like that. That was good. <laughs> I'll get the football thing going here. Hey, um, uh, flash dance. What about it? That's Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. best of times. Oh, the best, best of times. Yeah, the best that of times. Nice. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Kurt was, Russell. Kurt Russell. Pamela Reed. Robin Williams. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow. All right. I haven't seen that movie in ages. So so now the play just got done insulting my high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I did that on purpose. Uh, As Jeff puts his Letterman jacket away. <laughs> <laughs> Although Jeff didn't set foot near a football uh, game. Rips the letter off. No. I didn't I li- make it. I like how uh, Jason likes how Jeff is talking in third person. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blake likes Jeff, too. <laughs> oh, wait. That's not what I meant. No. Right. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, Pam at Pam World. Film review. This is uh, what we've been doing with everybody. Say, Post- send in a film review for listener feedback if you like. She did the New Point Break. She said, I tried watching New Point Break. It's bad. Only similarity to original are the names Johnny Utah and Bodie. That's a shame. So That's- so, so it means it's good then if the only similarities are the names Johnny Utah and Bodie. We got to talk about this at work, about uh, Point Break. Why is the first one so loved? I don't know. Actually, I thought the first one was okay. I mean, it's not like a cinematic masterpiece, mm-hmm. but it was all right. And he was a former Ohio State quarterback. I think I've seen it once. <laughs> Did you like the it? The original. No. Did, okay. I was, I was bored with it. It was 90s action cheese. Yeah. I, it, I think that's why. If you're into 90s action cheese, it's a perfect movie for you. But if you hate I, 90s action cheese, is the new right. one going to be better than the old one? No, it was worse. I feel like Ian and I are like in Step Brothers. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> I think we did. <laughs> We're agreeing way too much. I know. You're blowing this whole arch nemesis thing out of the water. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah really. Pittsburgh uh, nerd. Die. <laughs> oh, uh, next. Co-host. <laughs> Well, what we right. got next, Blake? Next, Pittsburgh nerd. If you listen to the podcast, you know what's next. Jeez. Oh yeah. Get it oh, going. My. Well, for our tech, what are you doing over there, audio guy? <laughs> well, we thought we had something going on. It's from uh, Nick Albright, and he says, "If I were to say I was Jeff's number one fan, oh yeah, are we measuring in inches?" If so, can I round up? Because half a fan sounds weird. Suck it, Doug, from number half fan. Oh, yeah. That's weird. (laughs) Not length. Oh, yeah. I would say inches because we are on the English metric system. That's true. That's true. I'm sorry, I got weird there, guys. I apologize. That's Actually, so technically, it's not even half a fan. It'd be one third. It's not Canadian. No, one third <laughs> fan, Nick Albright. Oh, no. Anyways, <laughs> Je- Jeff, how uncomfortable are you during this segment? Oh, incredibly. <laughs> okay. I, I I don't speak during this segment. I just let these two have fun, and then we move along. I, I've noticed, and your your uncomfortable silence is noted. <laughs> yes. Right. We we like Nick. It started with uh, Nick. Asking us questions about fantasizing about Jeff and placing him in certain movies. We got another one next week for him. Hey? <laughs> so we, we've decided that, you know, Nick likes fantasizing about Jeff. So you that's know, how it all started. You know what we're going to do? We don't do this often. We did it last week. But I think Nick is going to be our listener of the week this week. Congratulations, Nick. Well done, Nick Albright. Well done. Fap, fap, fap. Yeah. Well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> all right. From the Dit Man. Dit Man. I said, uh, does Blake have a tweeter yet? That would be no, a <laughs> no, I don't. Because if I put down my instant thoughts the first time around, I'd, I'd be involved in a lot of legal proceedings. And it's I, a good thing that I'd stay away from Twitter. I feel like we would not be sponsored. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. so. I, Continue. We I had been... to go back and edit some stuff out in the past because <laughs> Blake had second thoughts. <laughs> It's usually, Sean and Ian, it's usually on the way home. After we finish editing, well, what we do editing, and, like, getting it all ready to be sent out, 
on iTunes and that, and then he texts, uh, can you text, take that part out, you know, like, minute five of the show? <laughs> it, oh, no, it's minute 25. Thank you. <laughs> The so, part where I insulted almost everybody and their daughters. Every human race. <laughs> the sad part is I've got like a 30-minute drive home and I start thinking about things I said. I'm like, uh, maybe we better go edit that out. <laughs> so Just to be on the safe side. Because, you know, we, you know. It's, uh, Whoever, you ever have that problem, Sean? Um, we, we have done, a, done that from time to time in that. Um, <laughs> you know, you just you have that moment where... Maybe I shouldn't have said that, and I have to go back and re-listen to it. But the luck, the lucky thing is, unlike you guys, I, we usually record on Saturdays, and I post it on like Sunday night, Monday morning. Oh, okay. So I have I have like a twenty four hour rule where I can actually rethink it. Okay. No, we don't like twenty four hour rules. We just want to dive right in. <laughs> yeah, you you live on the edge. I've noticed that with your Facebook feed. So yeah. <laughs> you know the, the the funny thing is, most of the time it's pretty funny. But if you listen, but I'm like, you know what? If people take this out of the context or take it out of the the, the moment, yeah, it may not be a good thing. So uh, you know, and that, that's why we're sponsored by the Cincinnati Comic Expo. <laughs> For now. And, For now. <laughs> and sponsored by Better Reason. <laughs> Better reasoning. All right, moving on. Uh, Big Dev. Now, M Big Dev must be using their language from that state up north because a lot of what he says doesn't make sense to me. So I'll read it as written. It says, You best fact check Scab Jeff, the KVLY TV mass in ND. North Dakota. Is the third tallest structure. I thought it was like Notre Dame. I'm like, there's nothing big no. in Notre Dame. No, North Dakota. Brian <laughs> Kelly's ego. Brian Kelly's touchdown Jesus. Yeah. Uh, third tallest structure. It is tallest guide, wired structure. I think the wired guide. Uh, Jeff, Scamp Jeff last week said... You have to spell it as like guide. As I like just copied it from Twitter. Our intern well, copied so, it from Twitter. Uh, copied well, it from... Yes. What, so it is that state up north... You know, Scam grammar Jeff. education. It, well, I'm, I'm going to look up, see what guide is. All right, go ahead. Uh, Scab Jeff last week said that he was uh, shocked to know the tallest man-made man -man -man structure uh, in America was in North Dakota. It was like a cell tower or an antenna tower. Uh, Dev is saying it's not. <laughs> a guide tower is actually something. Oh, so, what is it? So Dev is showing his superior. It's not like a super dude tower? Absent of women? Well, there's pictures of them. They <laughs> are like those radio... Oh, yeah, it's spelled G-U-Y-E-D. -E so it's not like a super dude tower. I'll be honest. Do you want to set this out so you don't look as stupid in Dev's eyes? No, I actually keep it up because his <laughs> guide tower is pretty phallic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'll call you guys out. We'll edit that out in about an hour and a half from now. <laughs> nope, not happening. <really. laughs> keep going, Blake. It's all right. Pittsburgh nerds laugh. All right. Uh, <laughs> Big Dev says, this is a new TV trend to, to make movies in the TV series. Uh, Lethal Weapon is next. Yes. Well, Lethal Weapon TV series Two coming weeks. out. With Damon also Williams. Exodus. Oh, that's Damon right. Fox, Fox has that too, right? Exorcist? Yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot about Exorcist. Ooh. That looks creepy. What movie franchise should TV ruin next? Point Break. Oh, sorry. Uh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Didn't Lethal Weapon ruin itself after three and four? Yeah, I agree. I mean, two was a stretch. Two was good. Yeah, two, two was tolerable. Mm -hmm. uh, it still had the Joe Pesci character, which I hated, but... It's Damon Wayne. But it had that hot girl who was, like, mm -hmm. the South American, or South uh, African yeah. girl. Is that uh, so the Charlie Theron? Woman. Hour and 20 minutes into it, she gets naked. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that's all you need to know. Yes. That's my skill. My Jedi skill. <laughs> Name me a movie I can tell you. Mr. Skin, look out. Here comes Jason Brown. <laughs> yeah. that's, what, yeah, that's what his midichlorian uh, taught him how to do. Um, <laughs> midichlorian. Alyssa Milano, an hour and three minutes into Embrace of the Vampire. Anyways, moving yeah. on. <laughs> The only reason to watch well, the only, Empire. One good, one good thing about the Lethal Weapon movies that brought out later on was the introduction of Jet Li to... Oh, yeah, he was in that. Yeah, yeah. Lee, he was in Lethal Weapon 4, yeah. So, like, right after Lethal Weapon 4, they, like, limitedly... It was a limited release of uh, the Black Mask, I think. Yes. I didn't but, realize that right was the first that. appearance of Jet Li. In and so, a, Jet Li, that kind of kicked him off, and Jet Li became big. You, that. That's the only thing that came out of Lethal Weapon 4. You just did a one good thing segment that we do with Lethal Weapon 4. Well done, Ian. Well played, sir. Well played. 
<laughs> uh, any any but, other things? I think they should uh, bring the Smurfs back. That would be great. Um, oh, well, sorry. Yeah, but that's no, not no, really this ruined. This is moving into movie. TV. Well, oh, it is. Ruined. Yeah, it is they movies. Ruined they it. did Smurf movies. They now they from the cartoon. <laughs> Only did that just get Jeff or Blake's head going. But, <sighs> but I want to see Neil Patrick Harris in a Smurf TV show now. Ugh. Uh, I don't know. Give me a TV movie that you want that's going to be ruined. A movie to be ruined by television. I, I stand by my statement earlier today um, that Paul Blart is due for a TV show. <laughs> Paul Blart? Yeah, Paul, Paul Blart, Mark Cop. Um, I, I think you could probably get uh, Patton Oswald or, as, as or Paul Ernie Blart. Hudson. Or Ernie Hudson. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's looking for work. Yeah, because Kevin James can't do it because he's got his own hit show he, getting ready oh, to Oh, no, start. wait. Yeah, yeah, Kevin James. Isn't he in uh, King Kev- of Queens Mo- Walmart Cop? <laughs> Walmart Cop? Yeah, isn't that the name of the show? <laughs> it depends. Is it the Walmart near us? Because in Cincinnati, we have the number one uh, uh, dangerous uh, Walmart in America, in Cincinnati. It's the really? most shoplifted. Yes. <laughs> it is it is the most shoplifted in the store's uh, company. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, but have we had anybody shot there? Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, there's, so. there's, I think we? there's been a shooting there. Is there is there a police station inside of the Walmart? It's outside. Is it? <laughs> there and, is. And, and, right and they built that uh, recently because of all the problems. They they had don't you compare us to Philadelphia, <laughs> Pittsburgh nerds? <laughs> hey, we had we had a Walmart here that put a uh, a station inside of the Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> Because it was so bad. Yeah. No, they actually built this police mansion, basically, outside of the Walmart. And it just went up like two years ago. And it's like, yeah, I can see that. That's easy processing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So, thank you, Dev. End of the month. (laughs) Thank you, Big Dev. (sighs) All right, next, from uh, Randall Holt at RJ Holt 666. He's not evil. He just handled that way. I think we screwed up on that one. (laughs) That's okay. He said, how much is Jason charging for photo ops at the Cincinnati Comic Expo? None. None. He actually is going to pay you to have a picture (laughs) taken with him. And he's bringing his electric smoker. He's going to have brisket for you. You know what? I did have brisket this week, so fuck you. (laughs) Anyway. Out of your electric smoker? (laughs) And it was damn good, so shut the fuck up. It doesn't count. You're disqualified. It's electric. You know, electricity can cause wood to smoke. Pittsburgh Nerds, electric smoker. I have one, but I've never used it yet. (laughs) Seriously, (laughs) Ian? I inherited it. Sean? I swear to God. Sean? Ian, you're with me. Um, You know, I I am on the fence in the whole smoker situation. Uh, I'm an apartment dweller, so I would probably go electric as well. You should do it inside the apartment. I'm sure that would be a yeah. safety hazard. <laughs> yeah, safety hazard exactly. Inside the apartment. We're not allowed to have grills on the balcony, but they didn't say electric smokers inside <laughs> yeah. the oh, apartment. <laughs> electric smokers. Come on. You know good what? God, man. It was damn good, so shut it. Did you save any for me and Jack? Actually, I do have some upstairs. Would you like some? Sure. Suck it. it anyway. What? <laughs> what did you make? Brisket? Actually, I made a chuck roast. Barbecue chuck roast. Nice. It, looked, it looked delicious. It, it, I, I had a, made a rub the night before. He actually downloaded a photo from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Place it up there. It's was, like, look what I did. It was really Bobby Flay's. If you check the JPEG uh, name origination, it's actually from BobbyFlay.com. Yeah, he's, he's following Bobby Flay on Instagram and just taking stuff from there. <laughs> I had a nice little rub the night before. <laughs> Not that way. <laughs> nice. No, hey, no, the title nice of the rub. show, A Nice Little Rub <laughs> the Night Before. <laughs> nope. This is what happens after your surgery? Yes. Came out looking like Chet from Weird Science. <laughs> <laughs> Please turn me back. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's sit overnight, uh, put it in the smoker. I came out, I cubed it up. And then I put uh, more uh, barbecue sauce. I put barbecue sauce on it then, and then put some rub, another rub on it. Put it back in for another hour and a half. It was awesome. What kind of barbecue sauce? Uh, actually, I got some from Gatlinburg. Uh, huh. It was from uh, shit. Now I can't remember one. Of my uh, Calhoun's Calhoun's barbecue sauce from the <laughs> restaurant down there. My favorite barbecue sauce. Okay. Actually, it was open pit. I saw the bottle. No, of the it kitchen. was not open. <laughs> Shut up. You know, Buy one, get one. <laughs> you will never get a bus- any meat from my smoker. <laughs> Sweet baby Ray's would have been acceptable. Uh, ooh. Yeah. But, uh, Calhoun's is pretty damn good, I have to admit. So, and they, 
That's right. Like there, so. Pittsburgh nerd. French fries on burgers and sandwiches. React. Delicious. It just ain't right. All right. So let's what? Move what? On. what is wrong with you? All right, I just I'm don't bringing like, up Pittsburgh stuff. I don't like this law. Because I'm, I'm. I agree with you. I, I can agree with you. Because I'm educated. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what Ian said. No slaw on it. No slaw. Nah. No slaw. Oh. No, See, no. slaw. Their slaw is different. If you get, oh. if you, if you're in the South and you get a barbecue, you get slaw on the sandwich. I'll get it. I'll get it. And it's it. decent slaw. But on a deli sandwich, and it's a vinegar-based slaw, it just doesn't work. Oh, vinegar-based. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not a fan of vinegar-based slaws. Yeah, yeah. Or vegetables, or <laughs> pretty much vegetables <laughs> in any shape or form. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so Reach. for people that are listening in like Canada, yeah, Pittsburgh, they put French fries on their sandwiches. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Uh, I am not trying. I'm not charging for a photo op at the expo, but I am looking for Ivy Doom Kitty. Uh, I would like her to come on our show. So, uh, if you're listening, please show up. She's a cosplayer. We're yes. And get her on the show. I say get pictures with all the cosplayers and Stan Lee and then ask them about my theory about yes. Mary Jane. <laughs> if anybody is going to Cincinnati Comic Expo, come find us. You can come on our show. Actually, if everybody's way. going to Cincinnati yeah. Comic Expo and you're standing in line to get an autograph oh, from Stan Lee, ask, everybody should ask him, 1960s Mary Jane, was that code for marijuana? <laughs> well, you were responsible. And you know what? <laughs> If a thousand of you do that, that would be the fucking funniest thing ever. But anyways, and we lose this Excelsior, so. my friend. <laughs> Ex- Excelsior. If so, our if over a thousand listeners all go to the Comic <laughs> Expo and get into Stan Lee's line, I'll be ecstatic. So, so if Mary Jane was the cue for pot, so you're saying that Peter Parker did her all the time? Peter Parker was uh, always uh, hungering for Mary Jane, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had a crush you're, on Mary you're Jane. Get him tired. All right. But no, uh, yeah. lots of love for Stan Lee. Yes. All right. Excelsior. John D. Mertens at Hojo B1. That, that, that's Jordan. Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> you know Jordan, our contest winner, Jordan? Oh, yeah, that guy. It's New English. It's okay. He's a two time winner, actually. Yeah. He's pretty lucky. Am I the only one who feels like peanut butter and jelly is just goo on bread? Now, I'm not sure if this is a question or is this is what Sca- he wants Scab Jeff to write in the book. Is I take <laughs> exception to this. What's that? The, the, this is not goo on bread. This is delicious goodness. Okay. Well, Only if there's nuts in it. No, God, no. No. No, you, I love you, chunky you, peanut butter. You You're give com- me a nice creamy peanut butter, a good jiff. No, not little little grape jelly on that. Yep. Mm-mm, that's fine eating, my okay, friend. I like my peanut fine butter eating. chunky and creamy, so I don't care. Just like but- your women. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <But> Excelsior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but I have I don't take an insult to calling it goo on bread. It's just delicious goo on bread. All right. Here's the question: Do you put it in the refrigerator or in the uh, uh, the pantry? The peanut butter? Yes. The peanut butter goes in the pantry. Pantry. Oh. J- yeah. Jason pantry. refrigerates his peanut butter. What? Ah. Now, how do you sp- at- how do you spread it on the bread? You have to keep it on the shelf to the su- on the door, and it doesn't get as cold. And then you can still spread it okay. <laughs> now, now weird. Are, are, you, are you are you talking regular like like Jif peanut yes. butter, or, 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 or are you getting like that natural stuff? You have to like mix the oil back into it. Oh, that stuff is nasty. Uh, um, uh, we had uh, that natural stuff, and it's nasty. You do have to mix yeah, it. It separates. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the the key to that is you actually store it upside down, mm-hmm. so that the oil rises up to the top ah. when, you, ah. when you flip it. You open it up and then you do the the organic natural peanut butter. Yeah, but then the, the peanut butter is really is, dry when you do that. It's okay. The key to that is just eat it all right away so it doesn't get time to separate. <laughs> there you or go. give it to your dog like you, Jeff. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, it's wow. not cheating if it's my dog. That's true. That is true. That is true. <laughs> PETA hates us now. <laughs> Urban legends. <laughs> it's not oh, a legend gosh. if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> And listener Jeff's feedback. Netflix and chill is just a peanut butter drawer. <laughs> <laughs> and his dog. And his dog. <laughs> it's, it's peanut butter and a movie of Lassie. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh man. Now if you I have was going to go Benji. <laughs> now if you have any too class. Young, too young. I was going to go Chomps. <laughs> remember yeah. that movie? No. <laughs> Milo and Otis. You don't remember Chomps? <laughs> I do remember Milo and Otis, not Chomps. Look up Chomps. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, I was just gonna say the the dog from the, the Sandlot. That's 
the St. Bernard? <laughs> yeah. And um, that killed the conversation. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, Jordan, I prefer on, toast Jeff. with Nutella. There you go. Ew. The problem I have with Nutella <laughs> is if you store it in the refrigerator, it's too hard to spread, but it's runny if you don't. You don't put it in the refrigerator. But it's runny if you don't. No, it's not. Well, maybe my cupboard is too warm because I got Nutella and it's just like well, it doesn't, pours it, out of the it, jar. It doesn't have Nutella that. is not supposed to pour out of the jar. It is a little okay. not as thick as peanut butter. Yeah. It's not smart to put the space heater in your pantry, Jeff. <laughs> That's a bad sign. <laughs> right. Bad sign. Bad sign. <laughs> so Anyways, what? feedback has reached a new low. All right. <laughs> from number one, from doctor number one to doctor number one, thank you for the last question. Tebow had five to eight teams to pick from. He chose New York. Is he more of a media whore than we thought? Hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. I have more power to you. Fuck He's him. doing what he wants. They <laughs> sign him. He's getting paid to play baseball. The Who only, cares? The only thing is, though, he does have a playoff win. Marvin Lewis can't say that. <laughs> oh, wow. That's right. He does have a playoff win against Pittsburgh. That's does true. he? Yeah. Oh, also something Marvin Lewis can't say. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't throw a football. What makes you think you can throw a baseball? Again, Marvin Lewis is the only guy that had a team that tried to shiv a player on the field. It's like the last Boy Scout. <laughs> oh, I thought you were thinking nice. of uh, uh, Happy Gilmore, where he had the record of being the only person to try to stay up someone with a skate. That could work. That could work. That I could, could see Perfect me. trying to do that with a skate. <laughs> Why do you have a skate on the football field? Oh, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> he took it up during his suspension. <laughs> uh, it's so a there. hobby. <laughs> There's your listener feedback. It's time for another installment of the news of the geek. All right. Uh, Blake had to step out for a while, so uh, hopefully you'll be back in the top five. Uh, Much like RG3, he couldn't complete the game. Oh! oh. Love it. I feel Blake <laughs> has a better arm. Uh, I feel like he could make the pass. I don't know. I've seen him play softball. That's true. My, my eight-year-old niece has a better arm. <laughs> You got okay. Now that Blake's out of the room, it is fucking hilarious. When I saw that he went on IR, RG3. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's the first person I thought of too. <laughs> I just I, like when I saw the injury, I said to myself, "I can't wait to do the show now, just to just tear into him." <laughs> well, so well, the Onion when RG3 got signed, the <laughs> Onion had. A uh, story that same day that RG3 got injured walking into the lobby oh. at the Brown Stadium. Be- I remember that, it. yeah. Yes. And they just showed him laying on the ground <laughs> by the door. And I felt, eh, that's pretty accurate. It was only one game, but it was pretty accurate. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> someone shared the uh, on Facebook the... Uh, Meme? Uh, the, the T-shirt that oh, they were yes. selling that... that uh, the uh, Browns are going to put 0 and 16 in 2016. <laughs> They've got stiff competition from the Rams. Oh, <laughs> oh did they look bad or what? <laughs> I think it's great. Fuck the NFL for going back to LA. We like LA. But no, we don't hate LA by any stretch, but you know, they LA... obviously didn't want a team. They forced them to take a team. And we got a lot of <laughs> listeners in L.A. and California. Do you guys care? Please let us know on Twitter at Bad Ideas Podcast. We really want to know if you guys care that the Rams are back. I or should you let St. Louis have kept them? Well, no, St. Louis has the Cardinals. Fuck them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we do have uh, live tweets here. Doug B. wants to know... Uh, last time he was there uh, in Pittsburgh, they were working on a polar bear exhibit. Did they complete that, Sean? Um, I haven't been to the zoo this year. I, I believe it is completed from okay. what I've heard. I heard it's real nice. Okay, good. I good. have not either. I have not been to the zoo. Okay. I love going. To, we have. If you ever get to the Pittsburgh, they have an amazing uh, aquarium uh, that they just rebuilt a couple years ago. That's absolutely fantastic. Really? Yeah. Huh. Did not, I, I don't think I've ever been to the Pittsburgh Zoo, even. I have not been to the zoo in Pittsburgh. Um, it, it's, a, it's, it's a nice... The problem with the Pittsburgh Zoo is it's one giant hill, much oh. like everything else in Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, so, a lot of walking. So you walk... Like, half of it is walking up a hill, and the other half is walking down the hill. Cincinnati Zoo has a is great, but it's the same thing. There's, like, a couple flat areas, and then most of it is just hills everywhere. Terrain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Indianapolis Zoo is nice, and it's all flat. So that's nice. 
Uh, the Columbus Zoo is like that too. Columbus Zoo has like a water park and amusement park in there too. Now that you're mentioning it, I think the only zoo I've been to has been the Cincinnati Zoo, and that's been probably 16, 18 years since I've been there. Oh. Yeah. They, I think, I don't remember, but I think they also have a Mr. Rogers neighborhood train ride at our zoo. That's oh. right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we shoot gorillas at ours. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. wow. I, I'm on. <laughs> We did not need to go there. Oh, my kid fell in. Keep an eye. Anyways, uh, let's see here. We had the uh, same problem in Pittsburgh. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Only uh, it was with the meerkat. Well, not the meerkats. Did they the, shoot the meerkats? <laughs> no. The, the, I don't pa- know. the painted dogs. That was it. Yeah. Uh, was, oh. Yeah, they, they, some kid fell into the painted dog pit. and. Jeezel. Did they yeah. kill the painted dog? No. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they were. They, they, uh, they, they put down a couple. Jeezel. My God. Yeah, yeah. Well, kids could. or dogs? Yeah, the kid died too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh are you serious? <laughs> serious? Yeah. yeah. Look, look oh. it up. It, is, it was. Uh, it was awful. Yeah. Oh, we may edit that part out. That was kind of depressing. <laughs> yeah. What? Sorry. sorry. I apologize for that. <laughs> I was just trying to. Be oh, funny. We always got a top Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. You shot a gorilla. We 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 killed a kid. <laughs> you win. Yeah. We're a family affair podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, news of the Geek. Uh, during the audio commentary on Apocalypse, uh, the X Men movie. Apocalypse. Yeah. Uh, Brian Singer confirms that Mr. Sinister will, will be one of the antagonists in James Mongo- Mangold's Mangold. follow up, The Wolverine, the solo movie. Uh, basically, they're thinking that it would lead to the introduction of X23, X-23. Uh, the clone of Wolverine, the female clone. Um, it might also pave the way for the formation of the Marauders, which in turn could tie in with the Gambit movie that will never be made. Yeah, I say it won't tie in with the Gambit movie because they aren't making that, apparently. God, lost their second director. Tate's is still on it. Tate's is still on board? Because I yes. thought he had left. So. No, he's back. Uh, I feel like Tate's yeah. might be the director. <sighs> Maybe that's uh, him, what he was angling for, director. Uh, him, him, and, him and Lauren Donner show, um Schulster or whatever. What? Mm-hmm. Richard Donner's wife. I mean, they, they are hardcore into him making this this Gambit movie for some reason. Do you guys care about Gambit movie? Um, I do. Do you? But it has to be the right Gambit, though. It has to be the right guy playing. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure if Tate's is the right guy to. Play I don't think Gambit. he is. I mean, he just doesn't have he just doesn't have the look of Gambit. No, I mean, Gambit's. He can't even do a New Orleans accent, and he's from New Orleans. Oh, <laughs> right. I can, y'all. I will be go. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> 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 but uh, he just doesn't have the look. I mean, like, I want a, I want a Gambit movie done, but it, it, it just has to be done right. Yeah. I honestly I didn't, didn't even think the Gambit that was in... Uh, the first it's, Wolverine. It's almost, yeah. Yeah. Um, I honestly didn't mind Taylor Kitsch's Gambit in in that. I didn't think he I didn't did think a he bad, bad job. Nah. I just thought the movie was a piece of crap, so no one could actually look good. But it had it. the blob in it. <sighs> it had the blob in it. I feel like uh, the Gambit. Hey, the blob was in um... Apocalypse, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He the fought Mike, in... uh, Archangel at the beginning, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot that. That I was kind of blocking that movie out. To be yeah. honest, I thought <laughs> Apocalypse was terrible. It was not good. And, and, and also, we can also thank Wolverine Origins for get, finally giving us Deadpool. Oh, yes. Oh, sure. A yeah. true version of Deadpool. It's only a good thing that came out of that. <laughs> oh. I, I don't remember Deadpool in that movie. No. Plus the Archangel <laughs> disaster that was. Uh, I feel like Gambit has to have a lot of... Uh, I think if the quality will only be as good as how many times they say, I do declare. Because everybody <laughs> in the South says that, right? Yeah, apparently everybody in the South. That's it's kind of a South Carolina thing, and you're forcing it onto New Orleans. Everything I've learned about the South, I learned from the office. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, Jason, you're giving me the vapors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, are we having a run? Oh, a competition for Southern accents. Oh. <laughs> I'm ready to cry. Oh, I put it in my butt. Is that that Blake's girl? <laughs> yeah, that's Blake's girl. <laughs> wow. I'm not sure how to top that. Anything for a you second. You know how you top that? I, I do hope. declare I won. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh my, Jason. <laughs> Would you oh. please, please kindly put it in my dirty sphincter hole? <laughs> wow. 
I do declare I am done with this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, you make me blush. <laughs> blush and bashful. Okay, stop talking about your fucking... What movie is that? Steel Magnolias. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jeez. It's Southern. Come on, if I'm getting into the Southern Wars No, here. no, no. That movie is awful. Take a drink. <laughs> I like how X Wolverine and Mr. Sinister has led to <laughs> 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 Steel Magnolias. It's how we do things here, man. <laughs> if how only, we do things here. If only we could get some fried green tomatoes into this. <laughs> uh, let's see. After confirming that John Mandela... And I, I could never pronounce his name. Uh, Angelino? Manganiello? Sure. Uh, Manganiello. Well, thank Joe you. Manganiello. <laughs> Local Pittsburgh boy. I feel like you guys oh, should... Oh, he's from Pittsburgh. I feel like you guys should just come on every show just to, <laughs> to figure out how to say stuff. <laughs> do it a whole lot better than... Well, see, Jeff. Jason's got a speech impediment, so he I can't do. read these words properly. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he will play Deathstroke in the upcoming Batman movie. Jeff John sat down with the Wall Street Journal, because when I think nerd culture, I think Wall Street Journal. Um, right. <laughs> to talk more about Jeff John's overseeing the DC Films universe, alongside John Berg. He says, I'm trying to actually salvage it from, uh, uh, God, I forgot his name now. Zack uh, Snyder. Zack Snyder, yes. thank you. Uh, he says that he's trying to uh, make, the, his goal is to change the characters and how they're perceived which is a good sign, with a clear effort to make the movies more inspiring, starting with Justice League. I feel like they need to go darker. I feel yeah, like it wasn't they, dark enough. It wasn't dark time. enough. They, no. they, need to, they need to get rid of all grays and just go black. <laughs> uh, let's see. DC films are gritty and dark. That what, that's what makes them different. Um, that, could, that couldn't be more wrong, he said. It's a hopeful and optimistic view of life. Even Batman has a glimmer of that in him. If he didn't think he, he'll make tomorrow better, he would stop. You disagree. Uh, not angry, angsty Batman. How would angry, angsty respond to that? Urgh, I'm so mad. I'm angry. I'm never going to stop because everything sucks. <laughs> Good job. I feel like Batman does yeah. have a glimmer, but I feel like he would keep doing it because that's his persona. Bruce Wayne is the fake. So I feel like that he is Batman and he just wants to go out and beat people up. Not in the Christopher Nolan universe. Eh. I like Christopher Nolan. I like he the was, trilogy. He was looking for a world that didn't need a Batman. Yeah. I respect that vision, but I kind of like the other one. So, and we all know Bane took over Pittsburgh, so, you know. Ugh. Let's see. Talking, talking about Batman, the site adds that Justice League will address the Dark Knight's actions in Batman v Superman, uh, both in regards to torturing criminals and trying to kill the Man of Steel. How about killing the other people, too, in it? That might be a thing. A lo shitload of people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't just, like, one guy. <laughs> He, uh, ran, he was like running over innocent pedestrians. <laughs> it was Grand Theft Auto Batman. I it feel was. like that's what it was. Fantastic. Uh, the site confirms the duo worked with writer Chris Terrio to change the tone of the movie, aka rewrite Justice League. Uh, let's see here. We accelerate story to get to the hope and optimism a little faster. Yay! Oh, you mean as opposed to the very end when Superman might not be dead? Oh, there's a little bit of hope. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of hope is going to be the Wonder Twins and Gleek. <gasps> oh, I hope! <laughs> oh, that would kick ass. <laughs> Form of Water Beast. You're not even trying anymore. <laughs> gorilla Form with a bazooka. <laughs> I do like the gorilla with the bazooka. <laughs> Maybe he would have survived at Sisaizu if he had a bazooka. There you go. <laughs> Oh. oh, can I get a Wendy and Marvin sighting, please? Oh, oh with what was it? What Wonder Mutt? Wonder Mutt, yes. <laughs> Wonder oh. Mutt. Might as well throw Mr. T's dog in there too. Can we get him in if you're going the through the bulldog with the uh, mohawk? Yep, yep. Uh, let's see here. Uh, he said that's not the only major change, though, because <laughs> at this point, might as well. Uh, basically, they were going to do it two Justice Leagues, and they were going to connect. Not so much anymore. Oh, I missed that part. Uh, they're trying to stay true to the characters and tell stories that celebrate them. I feel like this is the biggest bullshit I've ever heard. Um, you know, this is about as bad as Sony with uh, the one woman that was in charge over there. Oh, I forgot her name, too. Yeah, thank God. Um, yeah, it's like, they. well, they said they're now thinking it was Steppenwolf was the bad guy in Justice League. Yeah. Because they were going to lead to Darkseid, or however you say his name, to come yeah. into the next one. Now, they said it may not be Steppenwolf. It's just going straight to Darkseid? They don't think it's Darkseid either. Oh. <laughs> so they're rewriting this completely. That's the rumor. So. 
Any well, hope for you guys? Actually, I, first off, I, 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 I'm a huge Jeff Johns fan. I am too. I agree. Uh, okay. And so, like, for him to be getting more involved seems to be, to me at least, a step in the right direction. Um, and they're bringing I, Ben Affleck along too. I, I liked Affleck as Batman, though. I, I really did. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm saying that's a good thing because he's supposed yeah. to have more input in the universe, too. Yeah. I I think, yes, they need to lighten the tone of these movies a tad. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want them to be just, you know, replicas of what Marvel's doing. Correct. I want them to be different. But, I mean, they went so far down the darkness hole that it's like, you, you've got to come back up. Mm-hmm. I, you know, so... I mean, the Justice League trailer from uh, Comic Con really wowed me. Uh, I think you know a lot of people. It didn't feel anything like Man of Steel or no. Trump Justice. So I, I still hold out hope, mm-hmm. just, just because I love these characters so much. That I, I want to see them done right. I'm happy that they're adding a couple of the like Cyborg. I'm shocked they're adding Cyborg to the movie, um, or he's in the movie. I'm sorry. Uh, I like. Flash, I like his character in the trailer uh, from Comic Con. I thought that was done well. Um, I, I, I feel like they have the tone, even Aquaman a little bit, uh, until his six ring uh, thing yeah. gets him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, 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 let's make fun of Aquaman again. Oh, we're going to make fun of Aquaman. <laughs> I mean, this for, is for, a badass Aquaman. Though. It is a badass one. I'll I mean, like I was, ex- I, I think I was expecting, you know, the whale riding or the. Dolphin skiing Aquaman. <laughs> With but, uh, No, I got this dude, King of Atlantis. I, I think that's, I really like that part of it. I liked it probably more so than anything else I've seen. I can't believe I'm saying that because I hated Aquaman until I, until I saw the previews for, for this. So. I don't know. We'll Do you see. think they have the balls to change out um, Eisenberg as Lex Luthor since he was pretty revered, revered in the last one? Reviled. Whatever. Revered, revered. <laughs> revered and reviled do not mean the same thing. As a matter of fact, they mean the opposite. I have a pe- uh, speech impediment. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> I, I mean, the problem is, like, if you're going to recast them, which, you know, you, you certainly could do, mm-hmm. I mean, who, who are you putting in there then? I, you know, are you sticking with a younger version I, of the character like 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 a Jesse Eisenberg or or are you do you go in a completely different direction I think you could uh do it that he's in prison still and you could bring his dad back his dad was in hiding yeah. right yeah, since that's what everyone claims oh it wasn't Lex Luthor it was his son Alexander I'm like then why did they freaking call him Lex because Lex is short <laughs> for Alexander yeah. <laughs> but he was just, Lex Luthor, and he was the first uh, yeah. indication of Lex Luthor in this uh, timeline, universe. in this universe. That yeah, that was such a bad idea. Uh, he did a really good job as the Riddler in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> he's a great Riddler. He was playing Lex Luthor, but he was a great Riddler. He was. Uh, Hollywood Reporter. Re- oh, I'm sorry, Ian. Did you have something? No, I'm good. Okay, no. go ahead. Uh, Hollywood Reporter reports that Fox has given a pilot production commitment to Black Lightning. I am excited about this. I love Black Lightning. Uh, basically, it will be adding to the network's roster of DC TV projects, which consists of Gotham <sighs> and Lucifer. Well, for for the first year, and then it'll go on to the CW. That's true. Because this yeah. is a Greg Berlanti uh, show. Not CBS, it? though. Fox actually wants the b- below fifty five crowd. Oh, okay. CBS but, doesn't. But but when Fox, well, but it's Fox, so they will cut it right that's away, true, and true. then it will end up on CW. That's true. Uh, Jeff P- Jefferson Pierce would be the first African American superhero to lead a network TV show. Uh, Netflix does have Luke Cage though premiering towards the end of the month. That trailer looked amazing, and uh, Black Lightning centers on Jefferson Pierce. He hung up his the suit and his secret identity years ago, but with his daughter hell-bent on justice and a star student recruited by a local gang, he'll be pulled back into the fight as the wanted vigilante and DC legend Black Lightning. I love Black Lightning in the comics. I have no issue with this one bit. Oh, no, I think it's great to have yeah. a show like that out. So, yeah, I, I think it'd definitely be a really cool show. Um, you know, I, I never read the solo Black Lightning books, but, I mean... I was a big fan of Batman and the Outsiders, mm-hmm. and uh, Black Lightning was a big part of that team. Yeah. 
So now I'm really familiar with the character, and, and I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, I'll, I'll be definitely behind this as long as Fox doesn't do it like Gotham. Uh, I'm officially caught up on Gotham a couple weeks ago. I have no idea what this fucking season was about. <laughs> I, I really don't. Now we got fucking monsters out along with the criminals. Oh yeah, monsters <sighs> and criminals now, Jay. Oh, Jesus. Gotham's being overrun. We and Kid Mister Gordon, or sorry. Jim Gordon is now a vigilante in the new season. What the fuck? Well, he's not a cop anymore. Yeah, for the third time. <laughs> and you would think a city like Gotham needs as many cops as they can because they keep dying. <laughs> so just hire him back. At this point, you could probably hire the monsters back and put the monsters in there and that would be fine. God, <laughs> fucking Gotham. I think I might give up you this year. You mean two-time floppy winning Gotham? That's just mind-numbing. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I listened to that episode, and I'm like, just do the right thing. Do the... No. <laughs> a lot of people tell us about that on our <laughs> show. Do the right thing. Nope. <laughs> See, that's what we get for letting Doug have a vote. Well, Doug did show up for the floppies. Yeah, well, he showed up for If them. Ian and Sean showed up to, our, to the I, studios, they have a vote. <laughs> I, I might have some vacation time. <laughs> okay, I'm <working> out. <laughs> You're only about four and a half hours away, five. Yeah. As long as you don't hit a deer on the highway in Pennsylvania. Because there's a thousand of them. Uh, there are. I, I highways? You're on the way home. What's that? There's a lot of deer. I almost hit some deer on the way home. Really? I really, yeah. I mean, I, I was driving down the road, and um, I, I come through a, uh, a park uh, on my way home, and I had to slow down because there were three deer crossing the road. Out, out in the woods here, we, don't, we have a couple deer, but it's not even that big. We run over skunks. All the time. Well, I yeah, don't we need to. Yeah, yeah you, you, well, you could tell when someone in the neighborhood hit a skunk because everyone can smell it. Yes, and it happens often. I, I hope it's not the you know just the actual natural smell out here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> could be. Nate at the the security gate wouldn't let that happen. No. Uh, Nate's see. a good guy. Yeah. Uh, Super Mario Run is coming to the Apple Store for play on the Apple devices. Just announced. Uh, first Nintendo mobile game. So, uh, Jeff, are you getting the iPhone 7? No. $700. <laughs> I feel like we could do it. You, you realize it's been just about a year since I've got my first Smarty phone. Yes. Yes. And that one is the cheapest one that was on the market. <laughs> uh, I have a, a co-worker uh, who is um, always bitches about not having money, and they pre-ordered the iPhone already. I'm like, but you just said you have no money. Why are you pre-ordering the iPhone? That just doesn't make sense. It's a lot of fucking money! Sean, Ian, are you pre-ordering? I am not pre-ordering. I, I just upgraded uh, within the past four months to the iPhone 6S Plus. Okay. Is that the big it's, one? Yes. Okay. That's the one you can't yeah, fit it, in it, your pocket? Yeah, it's funny. I... I it can kind of fit in my pocket because you know I have a big ass. <laughs> but um, it, it's funny. Like I, I use uh, my my old iPhone. I, I completely um like wiped it out and then uh, rebooted it and I loaded uh the Star Wars card trader on there. So I have two Star Wars card trader accounts. Oh, clever! Yeah, <laughs> and but um, it's so different to hold my old phone because it was just the the old five. And it's so much smaller than what I'm used to now. It's like totally bizarre. I got to think, how did I survive with this thing? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I love, I'm a Mac person. I love Apple. I love their iPhone, all that stuff. I refuse to spend full price on any of those things because I get, I get a new uh, phone every two years. And it's the year, it's the last, it's the model before the brand new one that comes out. So, that's, that's what I usually do. I usually get one every two or three years, depending yeah. on how long I get it to last. Yeah, and I'm due next October, not this October, next October. So in theory, I'll probably be getting the 7 because then they'll have the 7S out. Um, exactly. Yeah. And I, I don't have a problem if people are buying them, but it just is a lot of money for it. And now you have to buy the iPhone earbuds because they don't have the jack anymore, and those are 160 bucks. <laughs> you, you can probably buy a, a, a Cheap second to... Uh, yeah. Second but if you're already second. if you're already buying the <laughs> iPhone pre-order, you're going to pre-order the thing. So um, yeah, I, I think it's ridiculous. Well, now, would they work with, with any Blu-ray device, or do you need Bluetooth? Their, or Bluetooth? Yeah, Blu-ray. Any <laughs> Bluetooth device, or do you need their? I have no idea. 
I don't think it works off of Bluetooth. Oh, really? At all? If I, I, I don't. I, it's something else where it's linked to the phone. Ugh. Ugh. Which would make them um, iPhone exclusive. Oh, which is a reason if, not to. <laughs> if I recall correctly, don't don't quote me on that. I don't have one, so I'm I find it all fascinating. <laughs> I mean, because Android, I mean, it's pretty accessible. To, it seems like it's more accessible than iPhones becoming. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's more exclusive to, you understand what I'm saying? Like I can, right. I, I just think you can get more options with Android than you can. I agree. Run. Yeah, you can use. Uh, uh, right. Bluetooth, I'll give you that much. And well, you, you can you still use Bluetooth with the iPhone. Oh, okay. it, it, there are, but I'm just saying that those wireless earbuds think, oh, okay. um, are but somehow you... linked to the phone itself, not using Bluetooth. I think it's the same thing with the watch. Oh. I, don't, I don't think the, the iWatch uses Bluetooth technology. It uses something else to link to the watch. Does anyone have the watch? To the phone. I do not know. I feel like, I, it, I feel like it's the most pointless thing. Well, when I got a cell phone, I got rid of my watch because I hated wearing a watch. <laughs> and now that I had something to tell time in my pocket that was better, I, I, I don't understand it at all. It's a level of douchiness <laughs> I can't reach. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I can, I can handle having. What about my, laying down? Yeah, <laughs> I can handle the iPhone. You know, it doesn't. But if I'm going to have the the iWatch, that's just that's just a bridge too far for me. I mean, I know a lot of people that have it. I just. I I don't understand it. So. I feel like spending my money on something else <laughs> than than a brand new phone. But hey, you know what? If you do, I mean, I know people that text on it and shit on the on the watch. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I guess oh. I don't know what they do. Oh, they I don't. I, I can't get, imagine looking at that screen. No. Yeah. They need to get voice to text, and that way they could look like they're uh, from uh, Star Trek. I was going to say Night Rider. Oh, oh Night Rider, even oh. better. I was going for Dick Tracy. But oh, Dick Tracy! <laughs> oh, yeah. great film with Warren Beatty. Great film. I was referring to the comics from the forties. More awful than the movie. <laughs> yeah. Have you read the Dick Tracy comics? They are not good. No, they are not. <laughs> I went through a time when the Dick Tracy movie came out. I was a kid, and I, w- I was like all excited about the movie, and my dad took me to see it. It's not good. And then I was reading the comics, and I was like, these aren't good either. <laughs> Why is he so beloved? <laughs> Speaking of things that are beloved but awful, mm-hmm. are you excited for the uh, the Batman sixty six cartoon movie? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, excited. it looks so cheesy. It does, but it looks so great. Yes. Um, no, and I like how they got Adam West and Burt Ward back. So good for them. And they got um, shoot, who's Catwoman? Um, Julie Newmar. Uh, Julie, Julie Newmar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm excited about that. They didn't get him on Craig. <laughs> they also didn't get uh, Caesar Romero, yeah, or just Meredith, or, Meredith or, or Frank Gorshin. <laughs> they did get uh, uh, John Aston still alive, or Vincent Price's Egghead. I'm a little upset by that. <laughs> Who did you say, John Aston? Is yeah. he alive? Can we confirm that? Is he alive? Oh, didn't we I confirm can... that already? What'd you say, Ian? I, I, I think he is. I think. I, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. But the same thing like I when Gene Wilder died, I thought he was dead already. I really did. And I was like, well, I feel bad that he died, but I kind of thought he was dead already, so it's okay. So. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I think John Aston outlived uh, Robo Julia. Oh, yes, yeah, Robo yeah, Julia. <laughs> I feel like M. Bison killed him. M. <laughs> Bison. Yep, John Aston, nice. born in 1930, age 86. There is no death date really? on him, so. Wow. <laughs> and this is Wikipedia, and they're up to date. Mm. That's what I looked on. Yeah. Too. Because hours after... Uh, Wilder? Uh, no, uh, the one who just died this weekend, Arquette. Alexis Arquette died. Oh, yeah. They had... That uh, one upset? They had that death date on Wikipedia, like, hours later. Did they ever say what she passed away from? They said it was a long illness. They illness. said illness was the only thing I'd heard. Huh. So, she was awesome in... Uh, shoot, Wedding what? Singer? Wedding Singer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. George. <laughs> George. <laughs> She just replays the same song over and over again. <laughs> Let's take a couple promos from our uh, network sponsors and from Cincinnati Comic Expo. <laughs> 
looking forward to coming to the Cincinnati Expo. And you know something? It's the last one I'm planning to come to in the Midwest. So what a great way to finish a book. The Cincinnati Expo. I'll be there. <laughs> It's time for Box Office Bombs. All right, time for the Box Office News and World Report, the September 9th through September 11th weekend. Starting with the bombs, Light Between the Oceans, everybody's favorite Aquaman movie. Mm, hmm. Yes. Has made only $9 million. Uh, this is its third week out? Yes. yes. $9 million Two or three, or yeah, on its $20 million budget. Is this the Michael Fassbender one? I think so, yes. Oh, good. Did you guys see this, Sean, Ian? No. Um, I wasn't even aware it was out. <laughs> <laughs> neither, was, neither was America. It's okay. <laughs> right. Uh, and going on for more bombs, uh, Ben-Hur has made about $25 million. Probably less than one-fourth of its total budget. That's a shame. I didn't know that was out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was only aware it was out because of you guys. <laughs> it, it did not look good. And I, I don't understand, like... I know they were trying to go for the religious grouping, but it's like, does anyone want a Ben Hur remake? And don't they know right. if you're going to release a religious movie, you release it around Easter time? Yeah. Was there, an, was there an outcry for a Ben Hur movie? No. No, yeah. but there's a big outcry for a Ten Commandments movie. Let's get that going. <laughs> Moses, Moses, Moses. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You release these movies like around Easter. They suddenly they seem to do well. Yeah. Leave Christmas to Harry Potter and Easter goes to, uh... <laughs> yeah. Apparently Christmas is now going to be a Star Wars thing. Yeah, yeah. Every I'll Christmas. take that. Yeah, I have no issue with that. I'm hoping Easter they're going to have the sequel to The Passion of the Christ. I'm excited about that. Are they talking about making one? Yes, they are. Yeah, Mel Gibson is. Yeah, Mel Gibson is making the resurrection of the Christ? Yes, yes. Good for him. Really? Yeah, <laughs> <I'm joke. laughs> seriously, he's talking about it. Is that a joke? It. No, that's not a joke. I thought he was trying to make a legitimate comeback. <laughs> Jesus or Mel Gibson? <laughs> M- he, Mel, he, Mel Gibson. Either or. Mel Gibson. Either or. <laughs> Jesus is legitimate Same comeback. person in his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Look here, sugar tits. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Did Jesus ever call someone sugar tits? I don't think he did. <laughs> I don't believe so, no. Not even, yet. Even in the darkest hour with Judas, he did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sugar tits, go betray me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's top five, Jeff? Top, top five at the box office this week. Number one, Sully enters at thirty-five and a half million in its opening weekend on a sixty million dollar budget. Let's do the Dev side on that one. <sighs> you don't want Sully, huh? Every review I have read has said we this could have been done in a, a thirty-five to forty-five minute documentary. And they ex- extend it for oh, an yeah, hour they had, and they drug out all the drama yeah. that really wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, did anybody else hear? I heard that uh, Jimmy Kimmel did a thing on Tom Hanks's uh, life, did a life retrospective yes. on Tom Hanks, and got Sullenberger to be Tom Hanks. Yes, he was Tom Hanks in all the famous movies. <laughs> yeah. I I need to look that up. I have not seen that. <laughs> and I like Tom Hanks too, but I just have no desire for Sully. Uh, number two, when the bow breaks, made fifteen million in its opening weekend on a thirteen million dollar budget. So a cheaply made horror movie got a bunch of money. It wasn't a horror movie. It was a Fatal Attraction with the surrogate uh, mom. Close enough. Okay, sorry. Either way, it's the the Blumberg method. Ain't make it for cheap. Make your twenty million, and you're happy. Yeah. When do we get our American Ninja remake? Sorry. American oh Ninja. my! <laughs> we saw that together. We did. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was a double feature seven. with uh, Last Dragon. Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Came out kicking after that one. That we did. Oh. <laughs> Your mom was not happy. No, I beat the hell out of her that night. No. <laughs> <laughs> Show enough was in the house. <laughs> Who's the master, Leroy? <laughs> Oh, shit. Gosh. We saw a lot of movies together, but that was probably one of the most remembered. Probably the best. Probably the best, too. We're not going to bed. No way. <laughs> um, I don't know if it was the best. 
I hope it I wouldn't come back. I mean, it, it, it's memorable, but I mean, we also saw Empire Strikes Back together. We saw Dune together. Yeah. Did you say Dune? Yeah. Dune, yeah. Oh, Jesus. We yeah. saw a lot of shit together. Yeah. <laughs> I would have said Doom would have been better than Dune, but... <laughs> I mean, you're talking about a 12 year old walking out of a movie theater going, "What the fuck did I just watch?" Yeah, I was like, LSD. "Yeah, I had no clue what was going on in Dune when I watched that." I don't think a lot of people don't know what's going on now. <laughs> yes. They said and that they're sandworms. What? Who was the guy that uh, I just read today? Somebody like a well-known director is trying to remake Dune. He wants to redo it. It can't be done. Well, Amy wanted to make it with Legos. That's true. From Culture Bear. Well, she did. Um, let's never do that again. <laughs> it's it's too dense of a story. I, like the the only way you make that make any sense is like I have like the three and a half hour version of that movie, which like the first hour and a half is nothing but explanation of what the hell is going on before you even get to the actual movie. Could 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 you do it as a extended series television show? You think? I think yeah. I I think like. No. The Sci-Fi Channel did one a few years ago. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, Blake is a fan of that one, I think. Yeah, uh, it's, and it's really well done, and it makes a whole lot more sense than the David Lynch movie did. So, um, oh, so it's out there, I just need to find it. Yeah. Okay. Um, they, they did both um, Dune, and then they did um, The Children of Dune uh, the yeah. next year. I remember that. Yeah, um, and um, I mean, they, they, they're bet they're, from a storytelling standpoint, it, it holds up a lot better because it makes more sense. But yeah, I mean, you would have to do that like to really, really do it justice. You'd have to do like a, like a ten hour. Holy oh, hell! Yeah. Because it's just it's so dense. I mean, it, it it would be like trying to do Game of Thrones as one movie. Nice. As a two like a two hour movie, it just you can't it can't be done. There's too I, much to it. Do you think people would be even into it? Except for the diehards. I, yeah, I think I don't think it would attract a lot of people outside of <laughs> right. fans I, of what's already there. I'm kind of shocked by Sean's uh, assumption that something could be made that clarifies a David Lynch movie. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, I, don't forget this. This was not a David Lynch movie. This was a, <laughs> yeah. uh, this was a book first, sir. Well, that's true. That is true. <laughs> but um, but then I, again, I, I mean, there's books out there that they, you know, that you can make a trilogy. I mean, like. Something like The Hobbit, you couldn't make that into a two-hour movie. You need to make a trilogy out of that. True, true. But I, I, I in all honesty, who really would have thought you could do a Game of Thrones TV show? Yeah. And sell it. Uh, yeah, like I said, it would have to be on a pay network like yeah, HBO. But it, yeah, you, you, you do it on HBO or Stars. Stars is desperate for something to compete with HBO. That would be a perfect vehicle. I, that's true. I'm actually kind of surprised that Walking Dead is doing so well on AMC. Like, they're what they get away with. Um, exactly, yeah. I always thought that was more of a Showtime uh, HBO series, uh, especially with Negan coming on. But, you know, it's, uh, you know I, don't, I don't need the cussing to make it good. But I just thought with the violence, I did not expect it to be on AMC. Exactly. I mean, it, it, they and they do a really good job with it. You know, and, like, making it TV-friendly but still... But giving you the violence. And, and I think it's always pushing the end. Yeah. I think that's... We'll see how that goes with Preacher, too, because now Preacher mm-hmm. really takes a tone or a turn, and I want to see what AMC is going to let them get away with on Preacher. So and... I'm sure they'll let push. I mean, AMC seems very creator friendly when it comes to stuff like that. I hope. I'm just saying, I think you're going to have a lot of issues with some of the religious sects that some of the stuff they say, they show. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm sure. I, I feel like that could be interesting. Walking Dead is not so much the religious, just violence. Preacher is kind of both. So I'm kind of wondering how they're going to do it. I, I, I hope they let them do it, but we'll we'll see. I still think Preacher should have been on HBO. I still I still say that to this day. But uh, Go ahead, Jeff. What do we got for number uh, three? Number three this week, Don't Breathe, made another $8 million for a total of $67 million on its $9.9 million budget. Oh, oh yeah, this is nine point nine million. Sorry, <laughs> good for them. Uh, keep going. Uh, number four, Suicide Squad made another six million. That is uh, over three hundred million on its budget of one hundred and seventy-five million. Did I read that that hit a billion this week? Did it really? Uh, Worldwide? Yeah, I thought it did. I'll that double would, check. That would surprise me, but wow, because yeah, that that means it made seven hundred million overseas, which. 
which is quite a lot. Good that I'm on uh, box office or I'm on IMDb <coughs> with Chomps the movie, so I can go right to it now. All right, go Chomps. <laughs> go Chomps. Chomps. <laughs> Chomps made forty thousand dollars <laughs> total. <laughs> Uh, well, it I'm, was traumatic as a kid. <laughs> it was. Was it like old Yeller traumatic or? Uh, at one point, huh, Sean? Yeah, yeah. It, it takes a turn. Oh, I apologize. Six hundred forty million. I think it passed all the other DC ones, maybe oh, except okay. for Batman v Superman. It passed Man of Steel. Sorry. Okay. Six hundred. That, that, that's a little less than a billion. Just a little bit. Just by you know, a wee bit. Just a little bit. Uh, number five this week is The Wildlife, made $3.5 million in its opening weekend on a $6 million budget. Refresh me again, what was The Wildlife? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I'm looking that up now, too. Uh, I have no idea what that I would is. Guess that, was a, that was an old Slaughter song. <laughs> Isn't it Talking Heads? Yeah, Talking Heads, too. They did a Wildlife. Yeah, yeah I think I know the Talking Heads song. I'm trying to yeah. Know. I don't know if I know the Slaughter song. John Goodman was in the Oh, so movie. it is a cartoon with... A cartoon with uh, animals in it. Okay, I'm like based on the title. I'm guessing it's a cartoon with animals, and I would be right. There you go. Oh, you know those talking animals movies well, sir. Oh, I love the talking animals movie. The Wild. The Wild was a great movie. You remember that one? I, I can see you camping out for Rio too. <laughs> they already made Rio too. I know. I'm sad saying. I'm sure oh. he did. Now, now Rango maybe. Rango. Oh, okay. Yeah. Apparently Pete that Dragon. was some of Johnny Depp's best work ever, is what some credits are saying. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Upcoming this week, uh, September sixteenth, uh, we've got uh, Blair Witch coming out. Anybody excited about Blair Witch? I'll probably go see it. I have high hopes for this. I think it'll be better or worse than the uh, original. I don't think it'll be as good as the original, but it looks like... I don't think it's going to... Well, point. It's not going to be as good as the original, but I think it has a lot of the scare factor that the original had. All right. Better or worse than the first sequel? Oh, Blair Witch 2. Is, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even know what that was. <laughs> it, it, if anybody says Blair Witch to me, I, I, my mind just goes right to the orgy scene. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what is this? I mean, I went... Lisa and I went to go see this movie, and all of a sudden this scene comes up. We were like, what the fuck? <laughs> What's, what is all this going on? We were like, I guess we had higher hopes. Like, <laughs> maybe another set of campers go in or something. <laughs> no, just out. orgies. No, it was, it was awful. But from, what it, what, from everything I've seen from this, it, it looks promising. Yeah, this one looks like it's actually going to take the first movie into account when it makes it, when it, when they, uh, as they filmed it. Yeah, this. I mean, they showed the kid in the corner, and that that was like the that was the oh, shocker yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I, Blair Witch as a whole was pretty good. I mean, there was like three probably really scary factors in that in that movie. Um, but that kid in the corner was like, wow, that's that's some crazy shit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, it scared me. I don't, and I'm a big horror buff, and I don't get scared often, but that tent thing too scared the hell out of me too. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, moving on. Also, I I know that Sean is looking forward to Bridget Jones's baby. Um, I have already pre-ordered my tickets. All right. <laughs> and I, um, this is a series I just don't even understand. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> Why what? do they keep making? <laughs> uh, you talking about a series right for television? I mean, <laughs> this is it right here. It's just you just get Renee Zellweger in a half-hour comedy with you know. Her with a bad British accent and a baby. I'm, I'm in. That's what I need this to ask. her out to be like this big whore. <laughs> I, I, you know what I mean? I don't know who the dad is. Bridget Jones' is orgy. Yeah. It's just yeah. I don't understand. Uh, I, what I want, I want to talk to, we should talk to any of those guys over at uh, 365 Flicks or whatever. I want to know what British people think about Bridget Jones's accent. I yeah. Yeah. Some people I, just want to watch the world burn. I think it's a great accent. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, I mean, seriously, because I've actually heard people Americans say she does a great British accent. I want, I want to hear what the Brits say. Yeah, she does a great British accent in a terrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's no Madonna, Madonna accent, but you know. Oh, I've watched enough Doctor Who. I know that she's faking it. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> that's your expert opinion. Well, yeah, because yeah, yeah, exactly. I can actually understand what she's saying in her terrible fake British accent. I can't understand the real British accent. Are you watching the full Monty? <laughs> <laughs> I have to watch every episode yeah. of Doctor Who twice because there's stuff I miss. Because I don't. What the hell did they say? I just I don't understand this movie. Do we really have to see Renee Zellweger in her underwear again? <laughs> again. I'm, I'm always up for seeing Renee Zellweger in her underwear. I'm just saying that it's just. It's well, just the same concept every time, except this this time she plays a whore that doesn't know what to do or get who get him. <laughs> belongs to. Although if I want to see Renee Zellweger in her underwear, I'll go back twenty years and watch her in Empire Records. Mm. Why is in, Hugh Grant in this movie? Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, do I get Hugh Grant in his underwear? No. Oh. Just Hugh Grant in general. <laughs> I mean like I don't I it's, it doesn't make sense. Revealing clothing. <laughs> All right, uh, Jason, I'm going to have to ask your help on this one. Mm -hmm. Hillsong, Let Hope Rise opening this uh, I got, weekend? I got my tickets for this one. It's, uh, let's see, the, they examine the rise, it's a documentary, the mm -hmm. rise and popularity of Australian-based Christian band Hillsong United. Ah, so that is a band, a Christian rock band out of Australia mm -hmm. documentary. Yes, I'm excited. A great movie for your whole church is the tagline. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, I'm glad I do not work at the theater for that one. <laughs> um, and also coming out this weekend is Snowden. Yeah, they said it's nothing new on the show. Like, if you've seen any documentary on it, they said it doesn't add anything. But what if I haven't seen any documentaries on it? I really don't care. If I would like to see a fictionalized virgin, <laughs> virgin, not virgin. <laughs> Uh, with, with, with a, with, with a uh, dreamy uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, mm. would I will this still put, get the Snowden uh, point across? I don't think I care. <laughs> so I'm gonna say no. I actually want to see it, but I'll wait for uh, you know HBO or whatnot. You know, I'll, Redbox. Yeah. No, you have to pay for Redbox. No, that's true. I'll watch it for free. Oh, oh Salty Languages show with us. Yeah. I'll watch that for free. <laughs> uh, Do we all remember when? You know, Oliver Stone made quality movies we all wanted to go see. Uh, back in the 80s? Yeah. I'm going to give them to the 90s. Okay, okay. Uh, let me think. I mean, uh, he, he did... Uh, he did Platoon. Yeah, he did, <laughs> he did Platoon. JFK. Um, Nixon. Nixon was really good. Um, he, he did the one with uh, Woody Harrelson and... Uh, Natural Born Killers. Natural Born Killers, Kingpin. yeah. <laughs> King, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, uh, that was a different Woody Harrelson oh, movie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was the uh, Oliver Stone remake Kingpin. <laughs> uh, they did a, didn't they do a TV show with that? JFK? JFK, yeah, he did JFK. That was good. Did they do a Kingpin TV show? I pray to God, no. Uh, it sounds like they probably might have, like on like USA or something. Hey, yeah. did that answer Deb's question or whoever that was? Which, uh, Wait, which franchise should you ruin? <laughs> Kingpin, that's the one you think they should ruin? Or do you think they should ruin uh, anything Oliver Stone did? They should make a Natural Born Killers TV show? Uh, there's a there's a dramatic uh, TV show called Kingpin about the United States war against a brutal family-run narcotics cartel. That's that is it. not the bowling movie. Uh, that was in 2003. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's a TV miniseries. Nope, still looking. <laughs> oh, no, I know what it was. Vanessa Angel was in Kingpin, and she was on the Weird Science TV show. That's it. Ah, look at you. Nice pull. I like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> nice pull after talking about Vanessa Angel. Ah! <laughs> I get it. I see what you did there. Bum, I, didn't know, I didn't even see what I did there, but I like it. <laughs> uh, you naughty boy, you, you naughty boy. <laughs> Do you guys know what buy sell is? I, uh, yes, we am well aware. Okay. Okay, we're going to buy some uh, stock here, people. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, the, we'll start out with Tom Hanks. Scott? Or, or Scott? Is it Sean Ian? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm still buying Tom Hanks. Okay. He, he, he's an American treasure. Mm -hmm. He's America's sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And I, he does have a, a, another um, Da Vinci movie coming out. Mm-hmm. Which you know is going to do just gangbusters. I don't know the last one. Like I think people were disappointed in the first one. The last one didn't do so well. I was kind of surprised they have a third one coming out. Uh, me personally, I think I would be kind of selling Tom Hanks about now. I think he's at, towards the end of his career. 
He's he's not the guy that oh a Tom Hanks movie is out let's run to, to the movie theater regardless of what it's about but Tom Hanks is in it kind of guy anymore. I'm buying but, him. I like Tom Hanks. He, he's he, he is that guy though that when you think he's down, he comes out with an Oscar. It's true. That's true. He did beat the volcano. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Ian, are you buying or selling? That's a crossroads. You only have a choice. You have to. I'll have buy him. Him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, there was a time Jason... I would have sold the shit out of him. Because I got tired of the beach ball and all that shit. Oh God, yeah. He put after movie after movie after movie, and I just got tired of it. But then Saving Private Ryan came out, and it was like, wow, it's pretty good. I really feel like we became best friends. Go, <laughs> <laughs> uh, go, go, strolling in the meadow together, holding hands. The meadow. Skipping. Skipping. Yes. Rainbows and unicorns. And... Jellyfishing. Ooh, Swatty potties. Yeah. I was just thinking of that when you mentioned rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> the squatty potty. Oh, that was brilliant. Uh, next. Uh, stock in Morris Chestnut. He was in When the Bow Breaks. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm buying Morris Chestnut. I like him. Let's see. I don't think I would sell right now because I don't think his stock is high enough to make any money from what I previously bought. Yeah, I, I feel like he, he, he's still he's growing. He, he's got a chance of make, <laughs> having that big breakout role yeah. still. Yeah. Sean, Ian? Uh, based upon the current uh, environment, I am not comfortable either buying or selling Morris Chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Would you like to talk about the national anthem? <laughs> no, thank you, sir. No, thank you. <laughs> The political podcast is down the hall and to the That's right. right. <laughs> it is. It thank is. you for that. Hi, Amy. <laughs> oh, bye. Yeah, thank you, Ian. Way to be a man. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so many bad thoughts going through my brain on that okay. one. <laughs> and let's do finish it up with Regina Hall. Please explain who Regina Hall is. She's in the When the Bow Breaks. Yeah. She's an actress. She, she, she seems to be in all of Morris Chestnut's movies. There you go. <laughs> so now you're going to make me look up for Regina I'm going to make Hall. Sean and Ian do this one first. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I, I'm selling Morris and I'm selling Regina because they seem to be a package. <laughs> um, so that means we all have to buy everyone else? <laughs> no, no. It's just, I mean, they, they seem to be in the same movie. Like, they're both in, like, those best man movies. They're both in When the Bow they, they seem to be movies together, is my point. And if, if one's tanking, the other's tanking. So I'm selling them while I can. Okay. Ian? Oh, she's um, in Scary More V4. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty much selling because I don't think I like oh, the single movie she was in. I'm going to buy her because I feel like she could be a penny stock. I feel like so. Um,. I feel like he's only going up. Okay, so she's the one that was in the, the scary movies. Oh, Barbershop. Oh, huh, that makes you sell. Uh, I mean, literally, there's not a single movie that I've... <laughs> <laughs> so. Let's see, About Last Night. Keep going. Uh, think Like a Man. Keep going. Death at a Funeral. Hey, so are you buying or selling? Law-abiding citizen. Buying Deep or selling? Press, flesh handle, I'll and put it this way. I, I think <laughs> she's attractive. And like you said, she cannot. Her stock cannot cost a whole lot based on what she's been in. So there's a chance that something will uh, eventually no. hit. I feel like she's a stock that you put in your 401k. Oh wait, oh what? She was in the Honeymooners and Malibu's Most Wanted. Oh, uh, that hurts. The Honeymooners hurt. Well, that means her stock is probably free. <laughs> Penny stock <laughs> free. Penny. Stock. We've talked way too much about Regina Hall. Her agent doesn't talk this much about her. Love and basketball. That's true. Uh, I feel like um, Regina Hall is like the stock you put in your 401k portfolio. You don't really know much about it, but it's been level the whole time. And I feel like it would be good for 30 years. In 30, 30 years, you go back and look to see if those uh, pennies not, you threw at it uh, have turned into something. It's not going up or down. Uh, I, I don't play well with the stock market, so I'm going to say yeah. <laughs> yeah. So oh, if, I, if I played the stock market, I would be one broke motherfucker. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I think it's now time for our top five. Yay! Kay. Yay! Blake is not back yet. Well, he, he. You know what? How dare he with his civic duty? I know. Uh, sure. Let's see here. Uh, top five this week is top five sports rivalries. 
Top five favorite sports favorite. rivals. Not just best, but favorite. Your favorite one. I'll put it this way. There's a lot of sports rivalries. Everybody say, oh, this rivalry is the greatest or whatnot. If I don't like either team in the mm-hmm. rivalry, screw it. It's a crappy rivalry. Okay. Some of those might be said, and I'll let you know when if they are said, but screw them. If I want both teams to lose and I'm cheering for the Dirty Bomb, they won't make my list. Okay. Okay. Wow. I kind of did the same thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Sean, you yes. can go first. What's your number that, five? My number five is the game Harvard-Yale. Oh, they were going Triple H. <laughs> That's how I thought. That's what I thought. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's real to me, man. Triple it's H versus his quads. <laughs> okay, okay. Harvard-Yale. Harvard, yeah, one of the greatest rivalries in all of, of all of sports. Okay, and, and you uh, pay attention to it every year? Actually, I do. It's it's the the only Ivy League game I will go out of my way to watch. Okay. Uh, it is televised. I do uh, catch it, and, and and I it's usually a bad game, but I, I it's like something I do try to in, enjoy. I do like their chess competitions. They are exciting. Isn't yeah. that the game? Yeah, that's the game. <laughs> Harvard. I went to Harvard. I, I went have. to Yale. Oh, we can't be friends. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be friends. <laughs> oh, wow. We I, went park there. My, I parked my car down at Harvard Yard. <laughs> <laughs> I like those apples. <laughs> oh, you got a message from Blake here. Let's see. Oh, wow. uh, let's see. Uh, Ian, what's your number five? My number five. Front door lock. Would probably would probably have to be Chicago Green Bay game. I, I just okay. every year I try to watch. You know when they play, I just I just like that game. I don't know why. As a kid, I watched. My dad always liked it, so I watched it. So. Yeah, uh, I can it's, see those. Are, yeah, those are two teams that you know I'm not a fan of either team, and I'm not really either. But when they do play each other, yeah, that is a good game to watch. I want to watch. It. I'm not an <laughs> no anti why. fan of either team either. Okay, right. that's number five. All right. Well, I will go with my number five. My number five here, you guys probably won't give one wit about because it's a local rival. Mm, okay. But it's uh, the Xavier University, uh, University of Cincinnati uh, crosstown shootout basketball rival. Oh, okay. Okay, that's a good one. I like that. Uh, it, it is a big deal here in town. And yeah. like, within town, you, you have, people tend to be one or the other. Like. Most people I know will vote will root for either team when they're not playing, but it gets nasty when they do play each other. We we, we have that here. We have uh, Pitt and uh, Duquesne. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Duquesne. Duquesne. Yes. Uh, yeah. Didn't they have to change the uh, the shootout to something less uh, physical or cross violent? Down. They yeah. called it the showdown. The cross like, county showdown because shootout. You know, they kept getting in fights and it was too violent. And then two years later, they went back to the shootout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blake, Blake, if you beamed back in. Yeah, so uh, it, uh, the podcast was probably more efficient, wasn't it, without me? Not even close. <laughs> we got to the, the, the top, top five. five. <laughs> okay. So if, if you have your top five. Uh, what's your thoughts on Regina Hall? Who? <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. Uh, my number five is because I'm a big fan of them, and I hate the other team. Uh, and I grew up watching them, and I still watch them, and I still root for them in college basketball. Duke UNC. So I love Duke. Hate North Carolina. Um, so I am a Duke fan, and I love the rivalry. And, Actually, uh, you can almost make that a, a menage a trois. You can say Duke UNC Kentucky. Ah, fuck Kentucky. I can't put Kentucky on here because I hate UK. So yeah, that's you, why. You that's why it's a rivalry. Place. There you go. <laughs> well, that's why you're dipping into my number four right oh, now. Oh, yeah. sorry. I want to say Duke UK for Jeff. Uh, okay, uh, Blake, what's your number five? Uh, my number five was uh, Bears versus Yankees. Like the actual animal bear? No, from uh, Bad News Bears. <sighs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. That's a pool. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Bears, bears, yeah. That's right. Well, then my number five is uh, the Bears versus the Astrodome. Can I go with that? Is that Let cool? them play. Let, Let them play. play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, Blake, what's your number four? I'm intrigued. Tomatoes? Oh, uh, no, number four. I'm uh, reaching into uh, my 
European soccer. It's uh, Real, oh. Real Madrid versus Barcelona. Oh, you want Spanish. Spanish Premier League. That's right. La Liga. Oh, that was my number one. It How'd you get be. it? It should be your number one. How'd you get my number one? Oh, That's right. man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking soccer. I don't know. It, it, it's not the, the English Premier League, so I can't get into it. Me neither. Even though it's there better soccer, they don't speak English, so I must hate them. It's all right. Sp- Spanish Premier La Liga teams have won the uh, championship an awful lot recently, outside of the Germans, uh, Bayern sh- Munich. Sean and I were actually talking about the big FC Cincinnati Pittsburgh rivalry in soccer this year. So we, we I don't know if we can talk. It's a big a big thing, isn't it? It, it is. It's it's huge. Mm-hmm. Um, it's huge. I don't even know when they played, but I know it's it's a <laughs> just a monster rivalry. You know what it affected you, but you don't know when. But you <laughs> yeah, just felt it I, that day. I, I felt a disturbance in the force, right. it's like and uh, I said career. there was soccer being played. <laughs> the the Allegheny, the Allegheny swelled. Mm-hmm. The Monog- yep. Monogahela. Oh, that's not the only thing that's drunk. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on. My number four is uh, old school. This is back in the day when the Reds were in the NL West, and they fought. They played the Dodgers. The fucking Dodgers. I could not stand that rivalry because I fucking hate the Dodgers, and even to this day I do. I couldn't stand that rivalry. <laughs> it's my number four favorite. It is fun because I always <laughs> like when they played each other, though. There's always a good fight or a beanball yeah. coin. Yeah, I just didn't care about the Dodgers enough. No, I didn't. Well, that's a good thing it's not your number four, then. It's a good thing it's not my number <laughs> four. <laughs> What's your number four? Well, my number four was going to be Duke, Kentucky. Oh, okay. But somebody ruined that. I just said Duke. <laughs> Calm down. No, it's, it's all part of a combo. Yeah. It's all part. But not, I honestly could care less about North Carolina. Whatever they do, mm-hmm. I don't care. Back of Rose, I just, foot stomps. I just hate Kentucky so much that Duke pisses them off enough that Duke's my favorite college basketball team just because they piss off UK. And you normally hate Duke. And, no, not normal. Okay. And I hate North Carolina because they had Eric Montross. Remember him? No. Nope. I hate Montross. <laughs> yeah. I hate that guy. Uh, shot, or Ian, what's your number four? Uh, four would have to be probably Michigan, Ohio State. Okay. Who do you pick? Ohio State. Okay. Okay. See, my feeling that that's right. one of those where both teams can't lose, so I don't like eat at all. All right. This is this is where uh, Pittsburgh nerd. This is where I go. Fuck you. That's my number one. Oh. <laughs> wow. wow. On the board. Good job, Ian. That's right. This is where you gotta say, put it on the board. It's on the board, <laughs> guys. You played this game perfectly and screwed me out of my number one. <laughs> Pittsburgh fuckers. <laughs> you could say the Browns, but they have no rivalries. They gotta be competitive. Uh, no, but but to, to to properly state it is Ohio State Buckeyes versus that team up north. You do not say Michigan. However, recently you can add booger eaters now to the uh, yes, term because of Harbaugh. The Buckeyes versus booger eaters. You know you can say what you want about University of Michigan scholastics. We're not eating fucking boogers in Ohio. Wow, Sean, what's your number mm. four? Tell us how you really feel, Blake. Preach. <laughs> he holds back a little bit. Sean, what's your number four? Uh, I'm going with Dodgers Giants. Ah, okay. I mean, this is a classic rivalry going back to uh, the, the days of Brooklyn, New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, they took that rivalry West Coast. Mm-hmm. People West die. Coast. Oh, <laughs> I mean, they do, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, 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 usually it's a, it's a Great rivalry, I mean, as far as rivalries go. And, you know, m- normally if anything West Coast, I go, yeah. yeah. But that, that, that's, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, what's your number three? <laughs> My number three? Uh, oh, that's right. We're doing the circle drafts. I'm yes, sorry. the snake. The um, snake I, draft, yes. I, I, I am going uh, a little old school here. Uh, I'm going uh, Syracuse, Georgetown at basketball. Ooh. Okay. Oh, yeah, just bring this, like, uh, East Coast snobbery into it, why don't you? That's the, the old Big East? Or? That, that, that's the old Big East, yeah. yeah. Hey, so, some classic duels uh, over the years there. I mean, that was a must-watch TV right there. Anytime they played, uh, you, you, I, I was tuned in. So, so they, they got your attention there in, in, in the Pennsylvania area, huh? Well, I, I'm, I'm a college basketball fan, um, and, you know, Back then, especially like, to me, Big East basketball was the the thing to watch. 
And uh, true. You know, it, doesn't, it doesn't get much better than Syracuse Georgetown when it comes to Big East basketball. That that was, uh, like I said, just must watch TV. As much as I love Pitt. True. Um, Although you know, that, Georgetown really hasn't been very uh, a factor since Patrick Ewing graduated, right? No, no. They they um. I, I mean, no, there was I, that I, one I, game against Villanova. They're, they're, I haven't paid much attention <laughs> since Pitts left the Big East. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, right when around when Pitt was leaving, they they were still um uh, a major player, and and I went to a few Pitt Georgetown games, and uh. They, I think they were still ranked even. They were in the top 25. Yeah, they're doing pretty good. But um, yeah. uh, that, that's true. And, and their basketball coach, what's his name? Uh, John Thompson the yeah. third. Yeah, John Thompson. He's, he was kind of a jerk, but. Yeah. Well, so is his kid. And, and, his, and his son who's now. coaching. Is his yeah. son yeah. coaching yeah. Temple yeah. or where, where is he no, at now? No, he's coaching he's Georgetown. Georgetown. Oh. The third is now, he took over for Dan. So they're like the Clintons yeah. of uh, Georgetown basketball. <laughs> yeah, basically. Down the hall. pass out too? Okay. Anyways, uh. What number? Who are we on? Uh, we were, we're on the, Ian. Sean's number. Okay. No, the Ian. Ian, number three. Number three, probably Penguins, Flyers. Ah, okay. And I love that rivalry. It's, okay. it's always a hard-hitting game, dude. That's that's good hockey. And there's nothing wrong with Pittsburgh beating Philly, so I have no issue with that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I love my. I love the Penguins. So. Yeah, he is a Penguin fan. I'm a that's Penguin. Fan. Half the reason he went to. Those trips to Pittsburgh was to catch a Penguin game. Crosby is my uh, my boy. Sid so. the kid. Sid the kid. No, he's not a kid anymore. Sid we the former kid. We love Sid. We did love Sydney. Um, let's see who's at two now. Jeff, your number three. Uh, my number three. I got. I got a tie. Oh jeez. You hope he this, but they connect. Okay. Je- uh, Scab Jeff will be happy. My tie mm-hmm. connects. Uh, I've got a uh, uh, and. An old uh, tennis rival yeah. between Ooh. Steffi Graf and Monica Sellis. Oh, that's good. Okay. Ooh, yeah. And it's tied it's with uh, the... McEnroe? No. Uh, it's no. tied with Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Harding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's good. These are rivalries that ended in violence. <laughs> Monica Sellis screaming. <laughs> That was a knife. <laughs> that was a knife, yes. Oh, my goodness. Crazed You're right. fans jump out of the, the yeah. stands. Jeff Galoo and kneecapping people. Thing. That's what rivalries are about. And we got Tanya Harding sex tape out of it. I'm going to have to take that <laughs> off now. <laughs> I just heard somebody over there. Uh. That's me. <laughs> uh, I like the ends and fives. Well, I'll go with you on that one. My number three is Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels. Ends up with uh, Bret Hart knocking Vince McMahon the fuck out so, uh, in real life. So I appreciate that. So uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm letting Blake slide with the hey, bat. <laughs> I'm not sliding with anything. What are you talking okay. about? I mean, I mean, th- this is about as fictitious a rivalry as you can get. No. Oh, actually, they hated each other in real life. <laughs> I understand they hated each other in real life, but I mean, it was all a work, sir. I don't know if you know this. It's shot. real to me, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, isn't this fake? Isn't that fake wrestling? <laughs> it, it might be Is fake, it a fake rivalry, but it's more enjoyable than it's the faker, MMA it's or than faker boxing. than Bears versus Yankees. That's for sure. You know what? I want another Blake on the show. Buttermaker. <laughs> Buttermaker. <laughs> I mean, back in the day, I, I love pro wrestling, but I mean, well, you might as well say Iron Sheik versus America. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Nikolai Sheik Volkov versus and the Iron Hogan, Hogan, Hogan and Sean. That's right. This is why Ian and I became best friends, and you didn't. <laughs> yeah, that hurts yeah. me, Jason. Uh, that hurts. Sports entertainment still has sports in it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Shut up, Blake. Physically adept. Blake, what's your number three? <laughs> Asshole. Oh, you're gonna love my number three. Oh, here we go. Uh, Blur versus Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> Blur all the way. Oh. <laughs> It's because I couldn't think of a lot of good sports rivalries. But I know Blur versus Oasis was pretty intense in the mid-90s. <laughs> Wouldn't be a top five without some of them thrown in like that. Okay, okay. Uh, God. What's your number two? You really want my number two? <laughs> sure. Ketchup versus mustard? All right. Any team, any team that like, plays fucking Alabama <laughs> or any SEC team... 
Or any professional team that plays anybody from California, New York, or Florida. Fuck y'all. <laughs> So how do you really feel? We apologize for any fans in California, right. New York, and Florida. Uh, there are central bases. Uh, <laughs> please send your complaints to Blake at Graphic Novice. Uh, <laughs> anybody that plays SEC. Wisconsin kicking LSU ass last week. I fucking loved it. My number two. <laughs> All right, so anyways. Uh, you know what would be a nice one if you uh, get the Ohio State up there with, you know, playing Alabama and winning. As long as we won, I'd be happy. Yeah, it's taken back by your blur versus You know, I, otherwise, <laughs> my third, well, actually, my third was going to be uh, Pittsburgh-Cleveland, but since that hasn't been a rivalry for 20-plus years, <laughs> you can't call it a rivalry anymore. No, it's a no. one-sided affair. I actually left the Bengals-Pittsburgh off because yeah. I hate the Steelers so much. I can't. You don't even <laughs> like the rivalry. And, and you know I hate what? the rivalry. And you know what? We, we have the Pittsburgh nerds with us, yes. too. So we don't want to, to erupt into podcast violence. That's true. That's true. See, Sean, I do this for you. Well, I, I, I appreciate the Olive Branch. Just saying, division titles, baby. Uh, let's see. <laughs> you can't see him now, but he's flicking you the birds. <laughs> <laughs> the birds. He's saying nice What's things like to Thiesman? you. He's saying nice things to you, but his nonverbal communication here is off the wall. <laughs> My number two is uh, WCW versus WWE. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm, just I'm about to say, we know it's WCW versus oh, no, NWO. Sorry. Rolling Stones versus Beatles. No, oh, God. He hates them both. No. So <laughs> I hate them both. <laughs> uh, my number two is from the uh, 80s growing up, uh, the Celtics-Lakers. I was always a Celtics fan and uh, could not stand the Lakers. That almost and, made my list, too. Yeah, I love that. So It couldn't make my list because it was NBA. And Back NBA in the day, sucks. it was fun. It was fun. Oh, there's uh, nothing like watching Bird. Oh, Larry Bird and Kevin McHale. Even watching Magic, even though he's a Laker, it was still fun to watch Magic. Yeah, and they put Parrish in there. Oh. Yeah, the Chief. And they're, they're part of the reasons why I hate California and East Coast teams. <laughs> that is our listenership. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you notice I didn't say anything bad about Canadian hockey. California's more. Anyways, <laughs> uh, number two, Jeff. Uh, my number two is the current... Rival uh, that uh, we seem to be well, maybe not this year, but mm. locally, my my team, the Reds, uh, versus those bastards from St. Louis, the Cardinals. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I hate the Cardinals so much I couldn't even put them in my list. Yeah, they made my list because I love to hate them. Yeah, uh, that that uh, riot they had several years back when all the assholes were on the Cardinals, starting with their coach, it's Tony Larusa. Fucking uh. hated that man. Uh, so Reds Cardinals is my number two rivalry. Okay, uh, Ian, what's or no? Yeah, yeah, Ian, what's your number two? Number two is going back to Bulls Pistons. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, yeah, it was a great rivalry. Is that before or after Bill Lambier on the shiv to guy? <laughs> that was during. <laughs> oh, okay. During. Yeah, you but want to talk was, about? I mean, that was that was just a great rivalry. Yeah, George, you want to I talk mean, about Chicago had to get through them. Ugh, and dirty just... basketball teams. The Detroit oh Pistons man, they were, were assholes. I know. What a bunch of dirty assholes. They're the Steelers of the NBA. No, oh. uh, they're the <laughs> they're the Heinz Wars and Jerry Porters and <laughs> Harrisons of uh, you know basketball. I think Detroit's worse. Hey, uh, by the way, keep winning. I want to say a screw keep you winning. to Harrison and Pittsburgh defense. They cost me my first fantasy league game this year <laughs> with a Pittsburgh intercepting Kirk Cousins' pass in the end zone with time running out. If they just put a field goal up, Pittsburgh defense loses points and I win. Instead, Kirk Cousins has to suck and throw a defective pass into who else but that asshole Harrison intercepts it in the end zone. It's a bobble, but it's the end of the game, and even the officials are like. Screw it. This game sucks. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have won. I was trailing by point two points well, at that point. If, if Pittsburgh would have just let Cousins throw for three touchdowns, I would have won my game. <laughs> just a field goal in Pittsburgh, you know, total team points and defense, I would have won the game. I feel no. like this is your own fault for putting so much pressure on Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any pressure on Cousins. No, I'm just saying, Cousins <laughs> sucks. Whoever has him as a quarterback is going to be regretting it. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, who in hell would pick Kirk Cousins as a fantasy quarterback? <laughs> Sean, what's your number two? <laughs> I do have Jake Reed as a tight end, though, so that's why I'm pissed off as well. I think Sean just died. <laughs> no, yeah. no. But hey, Pittsburgh nerds, I do have Roethlisberger as my quarterback. Oh. I'm well, a second year in a row. 
That, that was some some high pointage then. The that Browns would like to have Roethlisberger. It would have been nice, except for D'Angelo Williams. Who the hell gives this guy new life at age 33 running balls in 20 yards out when they should be Pittsburgh Steelers, Roethlisberger, Pittsburgh touchdown passes. Instead, you got D'Angelo, 33-year-old D'Angelo Williams at a career night because of no Levy and Bell. Um... I'm and just, I lost because of that, too, by the way. I usually don't defend the Steelers, but they were playing the Redskins. Yeah. You do realize that everybody on the Pittsburgh team is going to score against the Redskins. Yeah. Just saying. And, they almost and their did. mamas. What was that? <laughs> and they almost did. Yeah. <laughs> they almost did. Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, Sean, what's your number two? Yeah, so, yeah, uh, top five. So, what is your opinions, guys? Blur or Oasis? <laughs> I, I'm going Blur. Good call. All right. Um, my number two... Mm-hmm. It is quite possibly the finest rivalry in all of professional football. I think okay. that's mine too. Steelers Ravens. Yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Blake's just bad because his football team has no rivalry. <laughs> yeah, they didn't even try to force us to be rivals with the Browns, and we're like, really again? <laughs> Do you guys? You guys have beaten them pretty well, though, recently, haven't you? mean Steelers you? versus original Browns. Is that what you meant to say? <laughs> no, I, I meant Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it used to be the Browns. Yeah, I mean, the, the team that used to be the Browns, sure, you could call them that, but I mean... God, I hate the Ravens. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, have, have you guys had, like... The Steelers have had their number, right, recently? Um, Not last year, no. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I'm being serious because yeah, I don't. No, I'm, but I mean, it, it, it's usually it's a, it's a pretty. We usually split. I think you know. Okay. Um, except in big games like uh, an AFC Championship game. Sure. Um, <laughs> I would say but, the best thing the Ravens have done for you guys is signing Flacco to a huge contract. That's the best thing he, they've done for the AFC North. Exactly. We were, we were talking about it because of his huge contract because he had one good run in this uh, playoffs four game run. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they lost 17 players. Uh, they couldn't re-sign 17 players throughout the contract. Yeah. I mean, it, he's a good quarterback. He, he's not that kind of money quarterback, though. No. Exactly. No, no, no. They, they overpriced him. They overpaid yeah. him. Yeah. They, I had no issue with them paying that because I knew it would hurt them in the long run. So I'm fine with that. I mean, he's a step above Trent Dilfer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just a step, not a billion-dollar contract. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's not one of the top five best quarterbacks in the league by far. No, no. I wouldn't you even know. say top ten, to be mm. honest. Uh, he doesn't go in fantasy leagues in the top 12. No. He's always people's backup quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean. But, hey, as a Browns I, I get, fan, I'd take him on my team immediately. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know. Well, you took RT3 on your team. Um, but what's your number one, Sean? My, my number one is uh, Pittsburgh Steelers against... Dallas Cowboys. Oh, sorry. No, no. Um, th- th- this is going to shock you, uh, but my number one is India-Pakistan when it comes to cricket. <laughs> Do you <laughs> watch it? No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but I-, I can defend this pick. Okay. And this-, this is how I can defend it. Um, many moons ago, I used to work um, for a satellite uh, TV provider, and... One of the packages they would offer in their international packages would be these cricket packages, mm-hmm. which would be like five hundred dollars for these cricket packages. Wow! And be, yeah, like two two weeks worth of cricket for five hundred bucks. Oh my god! Wow! Yeah, exactly. And they shelled it out, like, and they could only get it on one of their receivers in their home. They could they couldn't get it on all of them. They could only get it on one, <laughs> and they would show out five hundred dollars to to watch these cricket matches, and. You're talking about two two nuclear powers going at it in the sport of cricket. It's a sticky wicket, if you ask me, <laughs> and and it sells. Okay, oh, a lot yeah. of money made. So yeah, can't argue that. I can't believe it's yeah. five hundred dollars. Jesus. Oh, it, it was like ridiculous. Like and the how people much are people fanatics were. about it. Yeah, and they were, and you get like you'd say like you're like, well, how much does this this package cost? You're like, oh, well, for the two week package, it's five hundred dollars. Like, well, that's a good deal. I'll take it. <laughs> really? Are you sure? Well, I have to work every day, but I'm sure I can get some of it. <laughs> Watch some of it. <laughs> yeah. Sure, you look like 500 <laughs> rupees or something? <laughs> I'm going to have yeah. to sell the goats. <laughs> this, is a, this is American dollars, sir. You are aware of that. <laughs> it's not Canadian tire money. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ian, what's your number one? Baltimore Pittsburgh. 
Oh, okay. So sure. yeah, okay. that's my number one. It's I got it's, you. The game's so hard hitting. I mean, okay. It's it's a good, good clean hard hitting game. Oh. Yeah. You know when you when you got a bunch of murderers and thieves and uh, yeah, and you know wife beaters playing against each other. Yeah, it'd be pretty physical uh, physical game. Did Ray Lewis drop his white suit off in Pittsburgh? Did you guys find it? He's still looking uh, for it. <laughs> still looking I, for it. I heard it's still in Atlanta, but don't quote me on that. Okay, one. okay. Just checking. Just checking. He's a good man. Good man. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, what's your number one? Uh, my number one is the best rival in all sports. Mm-hmm. It's the Sock Monkeys versus Smell the Glove. Softball. Okay. Softball. <laughs> is that the one you almost got beat up in? No, 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 no. Oh. This was years ago. Oh, okay. It's still going on to this day. Yeah. Uh, uh, my so- Sunday night softball team. With his rivals for well, I was in the league for twenty years, si- seventeen probably. years now, mm-hmm. and I joined the mi- uh, middle of this rivalry. So this is a strong rivalry. This is the worst number one I've <laughs> nope. ever seen you do. This is the best number one. I think I like your tomatoes and onions. Extrapolate. For your I want to hear a good story. You can't just leave us hanging. Oh, great stories. It's just I'm in the mi- I'm part of it. That's why it's my favorite sports rivalry. Did Jason almost get beat up? No, 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 Jason. Did Jason stopped. get thrown out of the game? No, uh, my cousin actually. Yeah. Cousin's <laughs> husband still playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Let, let me ask. A relative do, of Jason. At the end of the was, game, do you drink beer together? I'm sorry. At the end of the game, do you drink beer together? Oh yes. Then it's not a rivalry, sir. With the oh. other team, you drink beer with the other team. We'll drink, yeah. Oh okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's their beer. Oh. Okay. So. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought uh, when you said to smell the glove, I thought it was the team that we're playing against that the uh, drunk guy was going to beat Jason up at at the end. Oh, no, no, no. This is the Sunday team. Th- that did happen. Uh, <laughs> almost happened last month. Jason almost got himself his ass kicked. He, he, did, he uh, did bring a white fan to the game. A, ri- a rivalry needs to be so bitter. See? That, that, that's what that I was thinking. W- that you wouldn't want to share their <laughs> we drink. We can make that team the new rivalry. You, you, you wouldn't want to appear on their podcast. <laughs> I would never appear on a podcast from Baltimore. Oh, oh the oh. city itself you just hate so much. I I, I have, e- even the Orioles. Uh, so, somebody mentioned on Twitter they, they were upset about the, the Orioles in 79 losing to the Pirates. And you're like, who cares? It, well, <laughs> I, I, I care because we are family. <laughs> so, so yes, the entire city of Baltimore and, you know, and, the, and their goofiness and the wire. I won't even watch the wire. That's how much I hate Baltimore. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I won't watch Rudy. That's how much I hate Notre Dame. Well, I agree with you on that one, my friend. Oh, I agree with you on that one. But it has rock. Charles S. Dunn. Anyway. <laughs> I like Sean Astin. That's a crappy-ass movie that I can't watch. I can't watch it. Won't do it. The Blind Side? I refuse to watch it. Oh, that's not good in the film. Because Michael Orr? Yes, he, he's, he's not in Baltimore anymore. But he was drafted by them. <laughs> As guilty by association. Ask Ray Lewis. Well, my number one is pretty easy. Uh, it's because uh, the Bengals are winning this rivalry every year. Bengals-Browns. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, that's my number one rivalry. I love watching them just beat up on uh, Johnny Manziel when he made his uh, start. That was a fun game. We were recording podcasts that night, uh, that day. It was a fun day. Yeah. Yeah. What, what happened when you went to watch that uh, Thursday night game, Bengals Browns, Jay? Let's not talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, usually those games are shootouts. <laughs> and strangely enough, we win half the time. Yeah. Anyways, that's I mean, you're, that's your only bright spot on our schedule. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, what's your number one, Blake? It was uh, the Ohio State oh, Buckeyes yeah, right. versus the Booger Eaters well, from we, the state up north. Well, we do have some fans. Uh, that have sent some in, some listeners. Uh, some yeah, but listen- you know, you know what made that rivalry so good? <laughs> Which, Which one? The, the Ohio State, oh, okay. the oh. Ohio State uh, team Which up one? north. It, the fact that it was just Bo Shem Beckler and Woody Hayes, especially you know when you have it's like the Emperor, who uh, Emperor Palpatine, Emperor Palpatine, and then Darth Vader goes to coach the, you know the Rebel Alliance is almost <laughs> how it was, if you really think about it. Because you got the teacher and you got the protege, and the protege leaves your program. Where does he leave to? Your arch nemesis in the Big Ten. The one team that you would never want your protege to go coach. Bo Schembechler, Bo Schembechler goes and coaches. To the point where, you know, Woody Hayes said that he was Notre Dame's best recruiter because when he went into a kids in the Northwest or the Midwest, the kid was either going to go, if he's good, he's either going to go to Ohio State. The team up north, 
where he's going to Notre Dame. And when Woody realized that he wasn't going to get the kid, he basically pushed him towards Notre Dame. Says, "You better go. You should go play for Notre Dame." So that because he didn't want to face him playing the team up north. So he was actually Notre Dame's best recruiter. Who would Boba Fett play back running back for? <laughs> Just Whoever asking. pays Notre Dame. Notes. Okay. <laughs> oh. Harbaugh versus Harbaugh. <laughs> so Boba Fett would be playing for the Gungans. <laughs> the uh, Trade Federation. No, Trade Federation. No, you got to remember, back in the day, Notre Dame football powerhouse. I, you know, you had three powerhouses in the Midwest. Ohio State, Team Up North, and Notre Dame. I just keep trying to picture Darth Vader with a whistle mm-hmm. and a coach's sweatshirt on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Uh, let's see. So, uh, the Dead Man, uh, Callan, Ka- Callan Kaepernick versus the National Anthem is in his top five. <laughs> he said that's a good rivalry. Uh, let's see here. Down the Chris- hall to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Richardson at 365 Flicks says best sports driver in Scotland. Uh, Celtic, well, Celtic. 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 <laughs> FC versus Rangers FC. Come on, the hoops. I don't know Oops. what any of that means, but uh, yes. It's yes. all foreign English to me. Yes, yes. It's all foreign Scottish. Uh, yeah, so there's a good one. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Uh, we did get a lot on our Facebook page at the Bad Ideas Podcast uh, on Facebook. Let's see here. Uh, I will give you one from Dev. He's Big got Dev. Kevin James versus Jason Brigger. <laughs> <laughs> Not really sporting since Kevin James is famous. Ow. <laughs> Uh, Arsenalona versus Arsenal. Sorry, Arsenal. <laughs> Arcelona. <laughs> Arsenal versus Tottenham. Tottenham. Yes, exactly. Tottenham. The, to- the Tottenham Spurs. Yeah, um, the Hot Spurs. Uh, yes, our, we have one of our super fans who's a uh, who's from Ireland and uh, is a big Hot Spurs fan. I like the Hot Carls better. Really, uh, he's from Ireland. and He's a Hot Spur fan. Yes, he is. Mm, interesting. Uh, Liverpool. Yeah. Liverpool, ver- Liverpool versus Manchester United was a tie for four. Liverpool versus Manny. Uh, let's see, number three, Sidney Crosby versus the entire NHL. <laughs> fuck Crosby. Just fuck him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, uh, it's this- tough to fuck him when we're raising that cup. That's right. <laughs> raising it high above our heads. Easiest. He's not expecting it then. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, Michigan versus Ohio State. And number they- one. Can you stop saying the M word, please? Sorry. It's that team up north. Uh, Detroit, or you can call them booger eaters. <laughs> Detroit Red Wings versus Colorado Avalanche. It resulted in a large frozen puddle of blood on the ice when it really boiled over in 97. Like Jeff said, every good rivalry has a fight. <laughs> yeah. Any uh, any any arena that's known for octopuses being thrown on the ice is pretty cool. Yeah, I, Everybody loves octopi. I don't mm. mind the uh, throwing of the octopi. I just hate the team that skates there. Yeah, I just hate you. Uh, you know, Cleveland did her own version. It's called Bottles. <laughs> <laughs> and I will add for the record the referees deserved it okay there you go not sure why Cleveland has had bad karma uh, let's see uh, Chris Bednar Dr. Chris Dr. Bednar yes he has tie for number five Hobie versus the Pittsburgh Nerds the freshest new rivalry it is true but I feel like yes. after today it's not much of a rivalry since I like Ian <laughs> nice. thanks Maybe, no maybe now it's just a friendly competition. Oh, no, that Sean guy's kind of a jerk. Push each other. <laughs> we're push feel, each other. We're feeling the love. Push yeah. each other to, you know, greatness. New heights. Yeah. New heights. Okay. Uh, I feel like me and Jeff have created a bond. Yeah. Well, hey, we, we, we trade Star Wars cards if they... We we do. There, there's a bond that can't be broken. Now they just need the, to come out with cards worth getting. That might be the nerdiest yeah, thing uh, you've four. ever said on this show. A few more weeks. <laughs> really? A few more weeks, my friend. <laughs> There's uh, been a lot of nerdy things I've said on this show. That uh, Chris, Dr. Bender also had Iron Bowl. Bama versus Auburn had a lot of great recent games. Okay. Uh, Yankees for Ed Sox. Hate them both, but got to respect it. Nope. Nope. Don't got to nope. respect it. Hate them both. Hate them most both. Over, most overrated rivalry there Thank is. Thank you. Cheering for the Dirty Bomb. They would not be a rivalry, that big of a rivalry, if it wasn't for ESPN. Exactly. Yeah. Just because they're located halfway between Boston and New York? No. No. So, hey, Sunday night fo- uh, baseball. We got 20 se- weeks of it. Yep, 18 is Boston Yankees. Thanks, ESPN. Uh, let's see. Lakers versus Celtics in the 80s. Uh, number two, UNC versus Duke College basketball. Every game is usually riveting. Legit hatred to- towards Tobacco Road. Wow. That's a, he's on my list here. He's got to. And one, really, why even ask? OSU versus... That uh, team up north. The team up, yes. T-T-U-N. Yes, the team up north. <laughs> God. 
It's got a lot of anger towards You know, them. the best part is Woody Hayes would tell his players, to tell his families, if they were going to the game in Ann Arbor, to stop at the Ohio border in Toledo and buy their gas in Ohio so they didn't spend their money in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the stuff that rivalries are made of. You don't get this in the Iron Bowl. Iron Bowl. Iron Bowl. You know, the other stuff, right? You don't, a a you rivalry, I'm surprised, stories. wasn't mentioned by you gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, would right. have been the University of Cincinnati mm-hmm. against the University of Pittsburgh. The River City that's rivalry. Right. That's right. We don't really care about UC basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They cared about it for that one year. Brian Kelly, you know, did really well, but you know, he cherished it so well. He went to. Uh, I know. The, 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 yeah, the thing. Yeah, the the UC football just really, just recently started becoming maybe okay. Yeah. But that one year, they broke my heart. <laughs> well, That's they that. did that on purpose. The, hey, you know the, what? I think I was at that game. Pitt was the, playing here. No, the, in two in two thousand nine, we went to that game. I, I I tried to get to that game, but my car broke down. Uh, um, but in 2009, uh, uh, Cincinnati came to Pitt, and that was the day David Gilliard blew up and like returned like three kicks for touchdowns, and Pitt lost on an extra point. Ouch! Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a Division three school. We had no rivalries. <laughs> yeah. No, we we had one. UC had to beat Pitt in order to become bowl eligible or win the uh, that or win the that division. Was, that was two thousand nine. That was nine. Right, that was yeah. nine because if Pitt won that game, it, whoever won that game went to a BCS bowl game. Okay. Okay. Doesn't Broke. everybody go to a BCS? Uh, my college is. <laughs> but you know what? The last UC game I went to was a couple years ago, and it was Pitt, and we beat you. Yeah. Yeah. So the only, the only time I see, but the only time I see Ohio teams beat uh, Pittsburgh football teams. <laughs> there was a streak for a while where, where Pitt had their number, and yeah. then all of a sudden um, Kelly turned it around, and we we just couldn't stop him for some reason. I feel like uh, this is the year the Bengals are going to beat the Steelers in the playoffs. <laughs> oh, sorry. I feel like this is the year. I feel like this is the year the rivalry will be renewed. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you saw that offense at work, didn't you? <sighs> All I got to say that, that, is... Uh, that's at half, half strength. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All I got to say is go Cincinnati, because that way, if they're trailing, I know Big Ben's going to have to throw the ball throw a lot. lot. <laughs> 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 that's good for my fantasy football. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my college's biggest rival, I suppose, was Blake's college. Ohio University versus who? Miami. Miami. Oh, wow, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. We hated Miami, I know that much. I never understood that, why you guys hated us so much. Because we never actually looked at it as a big rival. Oh, no, you guys didn't care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it was something to you. It meant something to you. It, it was because you were like the snobby team of the conference. Yeah. Uh, still the same. Snob. Oh, it's still yeah. the same, yeah. yeah. Ohio, you also pulling a major upset one year against Pitt. There you <laughs> go. <Woo-hoo! laughs> We have our football bright spots. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, since it's going on midnight, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. why don't you guys show, tell us again where you can find we can find you? Uh, we're easy to find. Um, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, Satchel, um, Remarks. Uh, just search Pittsburgh Nerd. You'll find us there. We also are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope. Um, do it all once. Just Google Pittsburgh Nerd. You'll find us relatively easily. Oh, you guys Periscope, huh? Um, we I Sometimes. have it. I, I haven't used it in a while, but we, we have used it in the past, yes. And you'll see Ian and I dancing and skipping through a meadow. So it'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. La, it'll la, be... La, la. Ian, it was very nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Sean, we'll talk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, guys. We appreciate you guys coming on. and uh, we, Thanks for we being appre- here. We in the appreciate playoffs. you having us on. I hope we for that Hobie bump. Yeah, it's a big bump, strong bump. It's a strong bump. I uh, scab Jeff says so. <laughs> and uh, when the Bengals lose to you guys in the uh, playoffs, we'll uh, we'll have you guys back on. <laughs> we'll curse <laughs> you for a while. And... We'll try not to go to Buffalo Wild Wings beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bad idea of the week: being a quarter uh, number five twenty one, being a quarterback for the Browns. Uh, we can all agree on that. <laughs> Shouldn't that be in the top ten? <laughs> No, because the Browns don't matter. <laughs> the Browns just don't matter. Uh, Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. From walking dead to talking heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history. If it's not so bad, there's a the history. 
It's the history of bad, so bad. The history of bad, it's bad. History of 